American Comics, Makeup Containment, I Create a Foundation. Chapter 76 Suspicious Abandoned Treatment Plant. The disappearing team of Widow Sisters. At the moment Chen Feng didn't know that there was an omission in the planned operation to capture Obadiah. But that was just an idle move. Chen Feng originally planned to ask Obadiah for information, and let him play the remaining value of Obadiah. Let Iron Overlord sharpen Tony Stark and make him grow up as soon as possible. It has always been a part of the plan to make the Avengers Alliance available to the Foundation and become a shield in its own right, attracting the attention of gods from all walks of life in the future. Rather, if Chen Feng knew that Obadiah's Iron Overlord Dharma, with the help of the Twelve Round Table Council, used the 008 substrain virus to mutate and become a special infected body, Chen Feng would only be happier. Once this special containment is contained, it will receive more special rewards. Pigs have to be fattened before being killed. At the moment, Agents Natasha Romanoff and Agent Sky, as well as SHIELD's anomaly handling team and a team of MTF agents, a total of more than 100 people disappeared in the abandoned treatment plant area. An Allied drone overlooks the area from the sky. Although it has been out of contact for about six hours, traces of intense firefights can be vaguely seen here. There were many corpses of the Black Watch troops lying here and there on the ground, as well as the corpses of many zombies and mutant creatures. A lot of zombies wandering here and the probably came from the vicinity of the infected area. A precision shooter is in place. The fire team is ready. Sir, the MTF is ready. The voices of the team members came from the earphones. At the moment Chen Feng was concentrating on using his mental power to perceive the creatures in the nearby area. The psychic commander can use psychic power to detect enemy and friendly units near the perception area. By transforming the Aulai commander specific UF equipped with a psychic amplifier, Chen Feng's perception range can reach a radius of 5 kilometers. After the reconnaissance, Chen Feng didn't even find Agent Natasha Romanoff, Agent Sky, and the MTF team, and he didn't even find the bodies of his own people. Instead, many Black Watchmen's bodies were found, all of which were killed by hot weapons. This shows that the team led by Agents Natasha Romanoff and Agent Sky planned a raid, and the raid was undoubtedly successful. They killed the Black Watch area guarding here. But what is strange is the people. Where have all the people gone? At this time, Chen Feng suddenly detected a group of unusual devices, and found some unusual corpses in this area, and these corpses seem to be researchers from Black Watch. Sir, the drone has discovered that the troops with Black Watch are approaching. Do you need to block it? After hearing the news, Chen Feng exited the mental detection mode, and glanced at the Black Watch troops that appeared on the tablet. Chen Feng had such an expression as expected. At this time, we have discovered that there is a problem with the military investigation team. Are you planning to kill him? However, he didn't panic but calmly gave instructions to the team, leave some people to block the Black Watch, assign an assault team, and I will lead the assault team, Gwen, and Ilua into the target area to explore. Ever since he learned that Ally was the mother of 008, Chen Feng roughly knew what was going on. According to the description of the Black Light virus in the Massacre prototype, there are only two situations for Ally now. Due to the Black Light virus, in the first situation, the real Ally may already be in a dead state and the virus controls the body. The second situation is that Eliza has completely integrated with the black light combined with the 008 mother virus, becoming a symbiosis. To put it simply, the current Eliza is either dead and then invaded by the black light virus that is the mother of 008, possessing others' body and reborn, or she is completely symbiotic with 008 black light and becomes a symbiosis with the host similar to Venom. That's why Eliza lost most of her memories, and her current amnesia is only temporary. As the black light virus that integrated 008's mother in her body continues to evolve and become stronger and stronger, her memory will gradually recover and become stronger and stronger until she continues to grow a queen-like existence who can control all zombie viruses. Because of this, Chen Feng did not dare to let such an existence wander around, and would not intentionally restrict her actions. In the current situation, if you want to contain 008, you must get Eliza's favor so that she can be contained voluntarily. If Alyva is allowed to go her own way, Chen Feng is worried that she will go down the path of killing Brother A, the protagonist in the original. Because the black light virus can easily absorb the memory and knowledge of all living things, this will cause the huge and chaotic memory to overwhelm the original consciousness if it is not channeled and controlled. In the end, either one will become a saint by becoming a saint, or one will completely blacken after seeing a large number of dark sides of human beings like Brother A in the original version, and wants to use viruses to destroy the world. Chen Feng has already vaguely speculated about the containment this time. If he wants to successfully clean up the mess that 008 spread, he must have Eliza's goodwill at the same time, so that she can grow to the point where she can truly control the containment. The extent of 008's strength. For this reason, the two partners Eliza is familiar with, Catherine, Gwen, and Chen Feng must bring together everything around Eliza to be relatively familiar to her. Moreover, Eliza and Gwen are both extraordinary combat power now and they will not be a hindrance to the next actions. After Chen Feng, who had made up his mind to pay attention, gave the order, 
The MTF that had already set up an ambush soon began to fight. A mechanized force from Blackwatch is rushing to the laboratory here. Since the troops led by Natasha Romanoff and Agent Sky deployed an electronic jamming system before the attack, it took nearly five hours, and it was not until the daily shift of the guard that Blackwatch found the abnormality. Coincidentally, Chen Feng and the others came to this area just at this time. It can be seen that the Black Watch attaches great importance to this place. After discovering that there was a problem with the secret facility here and could not be contacted with the garrison troops, they immediately dispatched a mechanized infantry to investigate. In terms of strength, it is at least a mechanized infantry company. At this time, the leading M2 Bradley chariot had already entered the intersection. Before the crew could react, two flames shone from the commanding heights of the tall buildings above. Immediately afterwards, two anti-tank rockets hit the two M2 Bradley infantry vehicles at the same time. The crispy infantry vehicles were blown up on the spot and caught fire, quickly burning and exploding the ammunition inside. The two nearby troop carriers didn't even have time to react. They were affected by the explosion. The roof of the chariot flew up, crackling flames shot up into the sky, and all kinds of ammunition were flying everywhere. The infantry on the two affected troop trucks suffered heavy casualties in an instant. There is an ambush. Get out of the car and fight back. Blackwatch's battlefield commander reacted quickly, but it was useless. In the case of an ambush in an urban street battle with complex terrain and commanding heights everywhere, to put it bluntly, even if a person on a tall building throws a brick down, it might kill a soldier. In addition, it was ambushed again, and the Black Watch troops at the crossroads were unlucky. The MTF on the two tall buildings attacked back and forth, without any dead ends. At this time, the machine gunner fired wildly to suppress the shooting, while the precision shooter shot those counterattack firepower points and important targets one by one. The supporting Black Watch troops suffered heavy casualties immediately. Even the commander of the Black Watch hastily started to call for reinforcements. What's worse is that due to the loud gunfire, the zombies wandering around the infected area are also attracted, coupled with the violent explosion, the howling of the infected one after another. This is a sign of a wave of corpses. All of this is also part of the plan. By causing a wave of corpses, the follow-up Black Watch troops will not be able to reach their destination in time. The Black Watch troops had been completely suppressed, and suffered heavy casualties. At this time, the MTFs did not continue to attack, because the Black Watch troops, which suffered heavy casualties, found that large numbers of zombies had joined the battlefield. The gunshots and explosions from the battle just now were like the bell for dinner, and countless screaming bereaved households immediately poured into the block. The losses were heavy, and the Black Watch troops lost almost all their infantry vehicles. They had to fight the tide of corpses near the wreckage. However, their weakened firepower had no good power to stop the tide of corpses from entering. Looking at the Black Watch troops who were in a hard fight and about to be eaten by all members, Chen Feng didn't continue to watch but said to Gwen and allies beside him colon vertical bar let's go. As he spoke, he gestured to Miss to be beside him, and then the MTF team member with a hook gun immediately stepped forward and aimed at the building below and fired the zeppelin, and soon the zeppelin tied with the crossbow bolts was fixed to the building below roof tiles. Chen Feng took the lead and landed on the platform through the zeppelin. Spider Gwen and ally were more trouble free. They use fly directly. After the assault team followed Chen Feng down to the ceiling, the assault team led by Chen Feng soon killed the scattered zombies wandering nearby under the advanced silencer of the MTF E11 rifle, even in close combat. The sound it makes is almost the same as in the movie, and it has almost entered the target building without causing any big movements. The further you go in, the more corpses are strewn about on the ground, all of them are Black Watch soldiers who were attacked and killed by sneak attacks. Finally, the assault team led by Chen Feng came to the core area of the abandoned treatment plant, which is completely an advanced laboratory. In front of everyone. A suspicious sci-fi mechanical device was still running slowly. Dot. Chapter 77 Lunar Base and Zombie Legion Miss Tubi at the moment has completely analyzed the instrument in front of her, raised her head and said to Chen Feng, Commander, all the electronic parameters have been deciphered. According to the information, this seems to be some kind of transmitter, which is in a state of charging. Teleporter? Looking at the device in front of him, Chen Feng seemed to think of something, and said to the MTF at the side, Soldier. Go and put the energy object suspected of element 115 over there on the charger of this device. Yes, sir. Chen Feng watched as the MTF stepped aside under his instructions and picked up the substance that shone with blue light. According to Miss 2B's analysis, this should be an object called element 115, which is a mysterious substance brought by a meteorite falling to the blue star during World War II. And this substance was also the culprit that caused the red-handed MTF task force to be sent to this world. Element 115 has an extremely high value. The energy contained in each gram of element 115 is equivalent to 10 tons of helium-3, and the substance of helium-3 only has half a ton on the blue star. 
Only when the Earth Moon route is opened and mining can be carried out from the Moon surface can we have a steady stream of helium 3. It is conceivable that just this piece of element 115 in front of it is already invaluable, and it can make the two superpowers 683 start a war for this. Miss 2B, continued to check the records on the computer to see if there is information such as coordinates. At this time, Miss 2B, who had checked the computer records of the teleporter, said with a relaxed expression, Commander. The coordinates have been found just six hours ago. The teleporter teleported to a default coordinate location. You need to start teleportation. Device Chen Feng hesitated for a moment, then nodded. Open it. Okay, Commander. I'll just get it to work. Under Miss 2B's control, the teleporter soon started working again. At this time, a blue wormhole like spherical energy suddenly formed on the strange metal device in the center of the transmitter. In an instant, a huge amount of suction came. Commander, the teleportation has begun. Hearing this, Chen Feng gave up resisting and was directly sucked into the wormhole opened by element 115. The next second, when Chen Feng opened his eyes again, he appeared in a hall. Save ammo, keep firing. Here they come again. Detective Sky's shout came from next to his ears, and then the ground began to shake and the gravel buried the passage. This is the last time, if you use ability again, this place will definitely collapse, we must fight out. Chen Feng opened his eyes, and saw that he was in a huge amounts of underground cave and this huge amounts of underground cave extended in all directions, with several passages. Looks like some huge dig site from the 50s, full of old electronics and digging facilities. And in this huge amounts of underground mine, a group of people are fighting fiercely. It's the missing agents Sky and Natasha Romanoff, and the SHIE LD agents and MTF. At this time, Chen Feng saw a large number of zombies running faster than Bolt, with eyes as bright as 40 watt light bulbs. Zombies, almost without exception. These zombies are all wearing military uniforms from the 1940s to 1950s. Agent Sky, Agent Natasha Romanoff. What's going on here? Hearing Chen Feng's voice, the widow sister who was in the middle of the fierce battle looked back and saw Chen Feng and the assault team led by him who had just been teleported. Your Excellency Chen Feng, didn't expect you to find this place? That's great. It's a long story, you may be a little unbelievable, but this is no longer the blue star, we are on the moon. Chen Feng raised his eyebrows and pretended to be surprised. What? We are actually on there. Ajka, Moon. Is it caused by that weird facility like a teleporter? That's right, Commander, but there are a large number of infected creatures here. This space has been completely fallen, and these monsters came out of nowhere. They are endless, and they can't be killed at all. A new batch will come. Chen Feng looked at the tide of corpses and the team's increasingly weak firepower, and smiled slightly. Ammo. There's plenty of it here. As Chen Feng's voice fell, under the surprised eyes of Sky and Natasha Romanoff, a batch of ammunition boxes appeared out of nowhere in the open space. This is the function after the service gun was upgraded. It was an upgrade reward obtained after the 939 was contained. After the service gun was upgraded, the service gun now has a portable space of 5 cubic meters. In addition to not being able to store living things, it is a good choice to stuff it with ammunition. Therefore, Chen Feng had already placed a large amount of supplies in the 5 cubic meter space, and this time was just right. Replenish ammunition and supplies, supply in order, revive the battle formation, assault group, join the battle. Miss 2B. Miss Eliza and Gwen, please open the way ahead. As soon as the words fell, Miss 2B quickly jumped a few times, and then drew her sword to start a battle like Wash Wang mowing grass. At the same time, the three drones accompanying her kept pouring ammunition at the large number of zombies at the intersection. And Eliza didn't give up much, her hands turned into double blades. Entering the tide of corpses was like a tiger entering a pack of wolves. Spider Gwen is a little weaker, she doesn't have the powerful attack methods of Eliza and Miss 2B, but she has experienced spider strengthening after all and after getting along with Eliza and Catherine for many days, the two taught her a lot of fighting skills. So Gwen beat these zombies just like playing games, basically one punch or one sweep can overturn a large group of zombies. After these three super units entered the field, Sky and Widow Sister, who had been fighting fiercely for a long time, couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. Those SHIE LD agents and MTF task force members can also come up to replenish various supplies. After the supplies were supplied one after another, Chen Feng led the team with Eliza, Miss 2B, Spider Gwen, Sky and Widow Sister as sharp knives, and quickly rushed to the moon base through the passage. Core Zone. Dot. Chapter 78 Deciphering the 935 Group, A World Destroyed by 008 Miss 2B, Eliza, Gwen, Widow, and Sky turned into a forward team, like three sharp knives. They directly smashed through the endless tide of zombies, under the strong opening of the three extraordinary striker teams. The MTF Mobile Task Force members and SHIE LD's agent team cleaned all the way along the way, and were able to exert a strong firepower advantage. Although the tide of corpses here is huge, under such a powerful offensive, the team has maintained an unhurried speed, 
like a steamroller steadily crushing the tide of corpses. As the commander, Chen Feng didn't take much action, but released the psychic motivation and psychic shield support to the vanguard group composed of five ladies, and used the psychic power to detect ability to guide them to the right path tilde. Chen Feng carefully observed the various zombies who were killed along the way, but the more he observed, the more Chen Feng felt something was wrong. This moon base is very wrong. It stands to reason that it is impossible for a moon base to have such a large number of corpses. Even judging from this underground excavation site and some scattered documents and logs picked up, the scale of this lunar base can accommodate more than 1,000 people. But in a zombie wave of this scale, there are at least thousands of zombies just killed by the team, and they are still appearing constantly. And those zombies were also very strange, he even saw a lot of zombies in black watch costumes, and zombies in the shape of the German three-way macht during World War II. There are even 60s style zombies of White Eagle Federal and Soviet soldiers. More of them were civilians wearing clothes in the style of the 1950s and 1960s. The annual span of these zombie costumes is very exaggerated, all of which show that this lunar laboratory is extraordinary. Sure enough, when Chen Feng discovered these abnormalities, a system prompt appeared. Question mark investigate the abnormal lunar base. Question mark. This lunar base has an abnormal number of zombies from abnormal sources. Please investigate what is wrong with the lunar base of the 935 team. It seems that the system also judged that there was an abnormality here, and also triggered the extension of the branch line. Keep the formation, continue to attack and suppress them, be careful not to use heavy firepower, damage the base, we are on the moon. Chen Feng calmly continued to direct the team's operations. As they got closer to the surface facilities, Chen Feng also issued an order not to use heavy firepower. After all, this is on the moon. Once the old base facilities are destroyed, Everyone will be exposed to the intense radiation in outer space, or there will be problems with the airtight cabin, and the air will leak. Will have fatal consequences. This also caused the cleaning speed to be slightly slowed down without using heavy firepower. However, under the command of Chen Feng, the team still maintained an offensive formation, advancing methodically and slowly. Assault rifles, light machine guns, and submachine guns formed flames to wipe out the dense zombies. The commando team of MTF is like a compact killing machine, with perfect coordination, well trained precise marksmanship, and extremely stable and slowly retreating the tide of corpses. The only problem is that the consumption of ammunition is very large. Fortunately, the storage space of the agent duty gun can store a lot of ammunition, and it can continue to maintain such consumption. But if the tide of corpses continues like this, no amount of ammunition will be exhausted. But fortunately, when the team was advancing, they also found a lot of supplies left by the Black Watch, as well as the bodies of the Black Watch soldiers who shot themselves. By picking up corpses and using Black Watch's weapons, the problem of ammunition reduction is also alleviated. At this time, the team came to an area extending in all directions, and the number of corpses increased sharply. At this moment, Chen Feng quickly found the correct passage, and directed the team to pass quickly. Miss 2B, Aliza, Gwen, Detective Natasha Romanoff, and Detective Sky, please come to the rear, hold here, and we will open the passage. No problem, leave it to me, Commander. Commander. Go and open the passage. We guarantee that these zombies will not break through the line of defense. After hearing the affirmative answer, Chen Feng turned his head and told the Sergeant Major at the side, Sergeant Major, lead the commando and follow me. Yes, sir. Chen Feng led the task force quickly through the metal passage, and soon an old-fashioned metal isolation door weighing at least dozens of tons appeared in front of everyone. The combat sergeant waved his hand, and the electronic warfare experts of the commando team stepped forward immediately and cracked the door after a while. As the door was unlocked, the dust-filled metal door slowly opened. Everyone's field of vision suddenly opened up. A hall in the style of the 1950s and 1960s, all made of metal, appeared in front of everyone, and zombies in white coats appeared sporadically in the hall. These researcher zombies staggered and turned around, let out a roar. Bang, bang, two gunshots broke the tranquility, followed by dense gunfire. Chen Feng turned on the radio, Miss 2B, Agent Natasha Romanoff, you can follow up. We have come to the surface hall of the lunar base. Assault team, clean up the building and establish a safe zone. As you order, Commander, check the ammunition, form six assault teams, and follow me to clean the base. Soon, six assault teams, each consisting of twelve CQB melee teams armed with assault rifles and submachine guns, were organized and began to clean the surface facilities of the lunar base. It didn't take long for Chen Feng to see Miss 2B, Natasha Romanoff, Sky, Gwen, Alaga and a mixed MTF team composed of SHIELD agents. The team in the rear quickly passed the gate, and then the indicator light on the gate was lit, and with a few gunshots, the gate was closed, and the sound of the corpse tied outside the gate was completely blocked. It seems that after arriving at the surface facilities, the tide of corpses suddenly decreased. The zombies here are all white coats wearing the uniforms of researchers in the 1960s and zombie soldiers in old-fashioned military uniforms. 
In about an hour or so, all the zombies in the surface facilities of the Kimian base were wiped out. Commander, all the information has been sorted out. In the reference room of the base, Miss Tubi has quickly invaded and cracked those hosts, and sorted out all the documents and materials inside. Chen Feng nodded, pulled out his chair and sat in front of an old-fashioned desk, opened the military notebook on the desk, and looked carefully. Not surprisingly, this base was created by the 935 team. It can be seen from the 935 team log that can be seen everywhere in the base. The logo of the 935 group holds the nucleus of an atom with a hand, and the number 935 is in the nucleus. Through the collation of Miss 2B's information, Chen Feng also roughly understood what kind of existence the 935 group is. The 935 group was established before the outbreak of World War II. It was originally an organization composed of scientists from various countries, and it was used by the Prussian Third Reich after the outbreak of World War II. After the end of World War II, the Prussian Third Reich was defeated, and the 935 group split up and took refuge in the new Soviet Union and the White Eagle Federation. The main research direction of the 935 group was a special substance that appeared in the territory of the Prussian Third Reich at that time, those substances were named 115 elements. According to the description of Dr. Ludwig Mathis, the leader of the 935 group, element 115 is very powerful. Element 115 can revive dead cells, change time and space, and act as a miraculous weapon of energy, which has great research value. Element 115 did not exist on the Blue Star at all but was brought by meteorites from outside the sky. Even the 935 team only extracted 100 grams of element 115. 0. Dot 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 seeking flowers. Through the 115 elements, the 935 team created a hyperspace transmission device, and built this lunar base on the moon for research. In the late World War II, the 935 team defected to the Third Reich, and cooperated with Red Skull, the leader of Hydra to study lethal weapons together in order to restore the defeat of the German Empire. At this time, during a teleportation experiment of the 935 team, they discovered the world. During the exploration of that world, the 935 team found that it was a parallel world a blue star, but that parallel world had been completely destroyed by the source of infection. People in the whole world have turned into unconscious zombies, destroying the existence of that world. On that world, 935's advance team encountered a group of armed men calling themselves the Foundation's Mobile Task Force. That group of people obviously came from another world, with a level of technology far beyond theirs, and for some reason were also trapped in that world. Then the 935 team put forward a proposal to help the Foundation Task Force get out of trouble. After the two parties reached a brief cooperation, the 935 team learned the truth about the destruction of that world. An existence called Anomaly Containment 008 completely destroyed a world. And the Anomalous Containment 008, it was the teleportation caused by element 115, was brought to that world, causing a world to be destroyed. After that, team 935 and a part of Hydra, who had seen the horrors of the containment, and several renegade Red Right Task Force members form the Chaos Insurgency. Begin to study the power of this taboo. The Chaos Separatists are also divided into the branch that studies the 115 element and the branch that studies the 008 mutants train of the abnormal containment due to the different research directions. Naturally, this lunar base was specially established for the study of element 115, as well as the study of the living dead man core for that biochemical doomsday world. Through the structure of the base, Chen Feng finally knew why there were so many zombies in the underground facility. It turned out that there was a large experimental teleportation device in the underground facility. That large teleportation device has gone out of control, linking to that biochemical world and constantly teleporting the living dead men to this world. At the moment, Tasha and C, who are also looking at the documents outside, were numb. The two stared at each other dumbfounded, feeling that this base was established for the research of element 115 and abnormal containment, and the real face of the Dead Man Legion is actually linked to a doomsday world with 115 elements. All of this turned out to be that the abnormal containment 008 went out of control, leading to the destruction of the world. At this moment, the two became more and more awed and horrified at the concept of abnormal containment. One containment completely destroys a world. If a legion of living dead men is brought to this world's earth. Thinking of this, the expressions of the two of them changed. They immediately realized the horror of this weapon, because the teleportation of the 115 elements is almost without any rules, and it is teleported directly using the anchor points of different worlds. In other words, once someone or an organization uses this device, once it is activated, some cities on Blue Star may be swallowed up by countless zombies in an instant. Thinking of the sudden appearance of a large number of zombies and infected creatures in the city without warning, it is impossible for any city to withstand such a catastrophe. 
With such a weapon it is even possible to destroy a country in an instant. This must be prevented from happening. Chapter 79 The Mass Produced Iron Man Legion Strikes, The Space Carrier Retribution. Okay, boys, it's time to take back our city. Our mission is to cooperate with the Strategic Homeland Defense Attack and Logistics Agency, uh, that is, S-H-I-E-L-D to counterattack New York. We will take back the city from those thugs and mutant creatures, the Red First Division, the First Marine Division, and the Rangers and our 101st Airborne Division will clear New York City today. I believe that the flag of the Commonwealth will fly over Liberty Island again soon. After waiting for the landing area to be cleared, we will establish a landing area on Liberty Island as a bridgehead. After the FOB is completed, we will move towards the urban area. Ready to kick those bastards ass? Huger, in the cabin. The Marans of the Federal Marine Corps in the helicopter raised their M16 rifles and cheered. This is a relatively large helicopter formation consisting of 24 Black Hawks and 6 CH-47 Chinook transport helicopters. At the moment, these Federal soldiers were taking the 663 plane and flying over Liberty Island. The soldiers looked at the Statue of Liberty parallel to themselves and couldn't help being in a daze for a while. The non-commissioned officers and officers in the cockpit were still speaking to the soldiers to boost morale, when suddenly the alarm sounded in the cockpit. There was a violent shaking in the cabin, and then the CH-47 Chinook circled uncontrollably, and the two soldiers sitting in the tail cabin were unlucky and directly flew out of the hospital by the airflow circle. What happened? Hell, we're under attack, watch out, surface to air missiles. In a Black Hawk helicopter, the flight crew tried hard to maneuver and released heat induction, trying to avoid the incoming missiles. Several high explosive bombs hit the bulletproof glass of the cockpit. The fragments directly scratched his helmet. The flight crew screamed and covered his eyes. The co-pilot at the side checked his state in a panic, and didn't notice the CH-47 Chinook that was out of control and crashed ahead. The two out-of-control planes collided. Mayday. Mayday. This is Air Formation 21. We were attacked by unknown, Super 64 and Super 61 crash. Dot 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 damn, what is this? In the chaotic radio, the soldiers sitting in the Black Hawk helicopter saw several unidentified flight objects with tail flames approaching the fighter plane quickly. The flight attendant, who was calling by radio was stunned to see an Iron Man wearing an Iron Man armor flying in front of him. As soon as he raised his hand, the Gatling mounted on the mechanical alarm burst out with intensive firepower. Even the bulletproof glass in front of the cockpit could not resist such powerful firepower and was instantly penetrated. Amidst the terrified calls of the soldiers of the 21st Air Formation, such Iron Men appeared one after another. Hell, we dot 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 we're being attacked by Iron Men from Stark Industries. There are too many of them, accompanied by exclamations and screams on the radio as well as one crashed helicopter after another, in the Federal Army base behind, a group of high-ranking generals of the Federal Army watched in despair as their team suffered a one-sided battle. Massacre. Soon, calls were made to SHIELD, to Stark Industries. In the Foundation's Paradise Island base, Tony Stark, who has recovered from his injuries, is enjoying a rare sunbathe with Pepper by the beach on the island. While Tony was drinking a martini beside him, Several uninvited guests came over led by a Foundation officer. Mr. Stark, this is Phil Coulson agent from SHIELD. He said he has an urgent matter for you. Tony has not been idle recently, but has helped the Foundation develop a lot of new projects, so he has gotten acquainted with most of the liaison officers at the Foundation's Paradise Island base. Phil Coulson knew the location of the Foundation's Paradise Island base. Finding Chen Feng was more troublesome, but if you wanted to find Tony who was relatively more relaxed, you could still find him. Tony who was enjoying the two-person world with Pepper just now, suddenly suppressed the smile on his face, and looked helplessly at Phil Coulson who came to the door. Phil Coulson agent, what's the matter? Phil Coulson held a tablet in front of Tony with a serious expression on his face. Mr. Stark, not long ago, the Iron Man of Stark Industries attacked the federal military and SHIELD agents. These few video consultations were collected with great difficulty. Tony Stark took the tablet, clicked on the video, and watched it carefully in the video. A group of mysterious organizations equipped with MK-1 mechas attacked the Federation helicopter group and the SHIELD agent. Tony Stark carefully looked at the Iron Men in the picture, playing and watching frame by frame. Soon Tony Stark saw a lot of tricks, his brows were furrowed, and after a while, he let out a breath and returned the tablet to Phil Coulson. This is not done by Stark Industries, although the technology is indeed using the technology of MK-1. Tony Stark pondered for a moment and said with a puzzled expression, although Obadiah has obtained the technology of the Mark II, but without the help of JARVIS, he cannot 100% reproduce the performance of the Mark II. These are low-profile mass-produced versions of the Mark II, but the weird thing is, they act weird. According to my careful observation, they are just similar to MK2. In fact, the airframe is quite different from MK2. Moreover, these military paints are obviously militarized and simple military ho. Hearing Tony's words, Phil Coulson's face was not calm. What? 
These are the stolen Mark II technologies. According to our speculation, the number of these mass-produced military mechas is at least nearly a hundred. Don't be nervous. According to the evaluation of JARVIS, the combat power of these mass-produced military meshes can only display 50% of the performance of the original Mark II. They are all poor imitations. Mr. Tony, the diffusion of Iron Man technology has caused us to suffer huge amounts of losses, and we need your help. Tony was silent for a moment, then nodded slowly. Yes, that's right. This is my responsibility. I can't continue hiding here. Sorry, Pepper. I have some things that must be done. Pepper looked at Stark with concern and asked, Tony, are you okay? Tony squeezed out a smiling face. It's okay. With the help of the Foundation base, I have completed the improvement of MK4, and the injury has healed. Let me go with you. I can't let Obadiah continue to do evil. It's not too late. Let's set off immediately. Pepper watched with concern as Tony, Phil Coulson, Agent and others left the Paradise Island base in a hurry. And all this has been observed by Xfing. In the intelligence records, the search found at least 64 attacks in various parts of the Federation, all of which were military mechas manufactured using the technology of the MK2 mecha. Based on this system assessment, Xfing has obtained data, and it is highly suspected that the attacking military meshes were funded by chaos splitters from the Twelve Councils. Judging that Obadiah has acted outright hostile to the federal government, Xfing's assessment suggests that the air formation should be on standby. After receiving the 4.3 authorization from the commander, it will attack as soon as possible. The intelligence code 221 will be sent to the commander as soon as the communication is restored. As Xfing who has taken over the host system of the Foundation base, Chen Feng naturally gave her a lot of temporary decision-making and management authority. The first of the usual events, Xfing is already ready to go out, and only needs to report as soon as the commander resumes communication. And on the lunar base, Chen Feng has also cleared the surface buildings of the entire lunar base. However, because there are endless zombies underground, it is temporarily impossible to go down. Just when Chen Feng was wondering whether to return to the underground teleportation device and return to Blue Star, the completion prompt of the system branch task sounds. Complete the side mission of investigating the lunar base, get the reward, Call of Duty World Item Space Carrier Retribution. Chapter 80 The Shock of the Retribution Aerospace Carrier Is the Retribution Aerospace Carrier? Chen Feng looked at the items rewarded in the side quest, but he didn't he expect it to be a real space carrier. Is it because the side mission is at the lunar base of the 935 team? The Retribution Aerospace Aircraft Carrier, from Call of Duty 13 World, is the only remaining aerospace aircraft carrier of the Blue Star Fleet in this world. This space carrier is different from the space carrier made by SHIELD, which relies on anti-gravity engines and technology at the time, and can only operate in the atmosphere. The Retribution is a real interstellar warship that can travel to and from various planets in the solar system, although in the world of Call of Duty 13, the technological level is still at the elementary level interstellar civilization stage. However, as one of the flagships of its fleet, the Retribution should not be underestimated in its tonnage and combat power, and its combat power is unique on the current Blue Star. Although the Retribution is not the most powerful warship in the world of Call of Duty 13, its performance can also be ranked among the top few. The space carrier Retribution has a length of 637 meters, a height of 75 meters, and a width of 212 meters. Its maximum propulsion speed has reached 220,000 kilometers per hour. It also has an FTL, faster than light, engine mode, which can quickly maneuver within the solar system. Armed as a mothership, Retribution can carry 20 Jackal space fighters and 4 Raven transport boats. O9 also has 80 units of missile launch units, 6 large space torpedo pods and eight phalanx point defense systems. The Jackal is a standard aerospace fighter. If it is divided according to the standard, it should be regarded as a 6.5 generation fighter. This fighter has two 30mm cannons and two 50mm cannons. It is also equipped with eight AGM missiles that can attack multiple kind of goal. If the performance of the Jackal is outside the atmosphere, it actually surpasses that of the Snow Wind and the Light Knight who have not undergone aerial modification. However, if it is in the atmosphere, the Jackal will be beaten by the terrible mobility of Xfing and the Light Knight. After all, Xfing and the Light Knight who have not been modified by the sky cannot enter the space to fight. Even so, the 20 Jackal space fighters carried by the punishment can easily seize the air supremacy of any airspace on the current Blue Star. Now, this ship will be the key to Chen Feng's team leaving the lunar base. Although in theory, the team could go back to the ground with a lot of effort, and then return to the Earth through the teleportation device, but that would be too risky. According to the logs of the 935 team, the teleportation device located underground at the lunar surface base seems to have been damaged, and the number of people who can teleport each time is limited, which is very unstable. If they go back to the ground and return to the Earth through the transmission device, the team will definitely suffer unnecessary casualties. Apparently, both Agent Natasha Romanoff and Agent Sky, who are SHIELD agents, 
have noticed this. Not long after Chen Feng received the reward, he saw the widow walking into the reference room worriedly. Mr. Chen Feng, we have just read the information. The only way to go back and forth between the blue star and the moon is through the underground transmission device. The risk is too great. As she said that, the widow sister seemed to have made some kind of decision, and said resolutely, the Foundation was trapped in the lunar base to investigate the reason for our disappearance. Now you cannot lose your command, Mr. Chen Feng, on the Blue Star of Terror. If necessary, Sky and I hope that you can return to Terror first. Blue Star. Seeing the serious face of the Widow Sister and Agent Sky, who was ready to die generously at any time, a smile appeared on Chen Feng's face. Without exaggeration, Agent Natasha Romanoff and Agent Sky, it's not the yet, we have transportation. Hearing this, Natasha Romanoff and Sky's eyes widened. Sky looked at him in surprise, and said with some doubts, Sir, it's not that I question you, but we are now in a facility on the moon. You don't plan to let rockets take us back, do you? Well, to be honest, I didn't intend to continue to expose the Foundation's cards, but who made us trapped on the moon? Chen Feng shrugged, then pressed his military cap, and clapped his hands, Okay, beautiful ladies, get ready to take our transportation and enjoy this Earth moon flight. Seeing Chen Feng's mysterious expression, Natasha Romanoff and Sky had no choice but to follow. As soon as he left the reference room, he saw Gwen and Ally were approaching. Gwen approached the widow and asked, Miss Natasha Romanoff and Miss Sky, did Commander Chen Feng tell you how to leave? Mr. Chen Feng said that there is an Earth Moon flight that can pick us up. Earth Moon flight? Exclamation mark. Ally were and Gwen exclaimed. As a high school student, Gwen suddenly had a look of extreme excitement. Earth Moon flight? Is it a rocket? Or some kind of spaceship? Miss Tu B came over at this time and reported to Chen Feng Yui. The backup space carrier sent by the Commander, Foundation, has arrived at the scheduled orbit. Let them dock at the docking port of the barge at the lunar base. The docking port of the barge they are docking with is too small. Leave a part of the MTF stationed here and replenish supplies. We will return to Blue Star on the mothership first. After that, this base will still be used, so that the engineering team will prepare for the transformation and expansion of this place. Okay Commander, the mothership has arrived, and is preparing for the docking work. As Chen Feng said that, he stopped in his tracks, and everyone stopped what they were doing, staring at the giant in front of them in shock. Compared with any ordinary Blue Star aircraft carrier, the ship with a height of more than 600 meters is a huge steel monster, and this ship is now slowly docking at the barge docking port directly in front of the lunar base. Compared to the stunned Natasha Romanoff, Sky, Eliza and Gwen, who had never seen anything in the world, Chen Feng and Miss 2B seemed relatively indifferent. Miss 2B has also seen the big world in the world she lives in. Artificial humans have created huge lunar bases. She has seen a lot of such huge mechanical creations. Although it was the first time for Chen Feng to see this ship in reality, he was too familiar with this ship in the game. Even with his eyes closed, he knew the structure of this ship 517, so he was not interested. After all, although the punishment is a huge monster with a length of more than 600 meters, in Chen Feng's eyes, it is just a small boat. Compared with the truly powerful battleships of those space civilizations, the retribution can only be regarded as a light escort carrier class ship. Well, ladies, welcome aboard our special monthly flight, Retribution. Chen Feng looked at the mothership indifferently, introduced it with eloquence, and then took the lead through the barge interface and entered the interior of the cabin as naturally as going home. As soon as he entered the interior of the ship, Chen Feng's communication equipment immediately trembled a few times, and his communication system received several messages. Commander, welcome aboard the USS Retribution. I'm the captain. Rear Admiral John Alder. The 800 crew and marines on board are happy to serve you. At the moment Widow, Sky, Eliza, Gwen, and the SHIELD agents who entered the city like country guns all felt like a dream. The Foundation is so powerful, and it has its own space carrier, and looking at the advanced equipment on the ship, this group of children who have never seen anything in the world are like whales, obediently listening to the Foundation's arrangements. There is no way, if you don't take the Foundation's boat. Then you won't have a boat ticket to go home. Chapter 81 Consensus between Hydra and SHIELD Mass Production of Iron Man Capture Action Just when the MTF task force commanded by Chen Feng completed the assault on the lunar base and returned to Blue Star on the aircraft carrier retribution, the White Eagle Federation, which is in a state of blockade throughout the country, has become a mess. Although Chen Feng delivered a speech through major media across the United States, and announced the launch of the Global Strategy Bureau, the activation of the sleeper agent plan to assist the federal forces in recapturing the city. However, the departments responsible for calming down the chaos are actually SHIELD and the federal military. SHIELD and the federal military mobilized a lot of manpower and material resources, and used all military forces at hand, trying to regain control of the major cities of the Federation. SHIELD is the main department responsible for quelling the chaos, 
and Nick Fury at the moment can be described as battered. Compared with the Global Strategy Bureau, which has no sense of presence and does not receive much funding all year round, SHIELD can be said to receive the most funding. Therefore, whenever this kind of moment is related to the life and death of the Federation, it is also the time when SHIELD has to contribute the most. After the Global Strategic Bureau activated the sleeper agent, it immediately activated the Global Strategic Bureau safe houses in major cities in the Federal Territory, and assisted the JTF Joint Combat Force to establish a safe zone. In the two days since the plan was launched, all major cities have established safety zones one by one, and have gradually gained the firm foothold. However, the first wave of agents across the territory that went into battle also suffered a lot of casualties due to the tragic battle. Due to the harsh situation, many agents across the territory had to cooperate with the disabled JTF Joint Combat Forces to clear out chaotic areas and establish safe areas without backup, supplies and support. This situation did not gradually improve until the second and third waves of sleeper agents were activated to join the action. SHIELD and the military invested a lot of manpower and material resources to assemble and reorganize JTF's forces during these critical two days, and the Global Strategic Bureau has one precious time for this at a time when the division has bought so much time under such difficult circumstances. The pressure is on the side of the SHIELD and the Federal Army. Nick Fury knows that in this crisis, SHIELD must have good results, and if it only relies on the Global Strategy Bureau, it will be able to turn the tide. Then, SHIELD, which took the most resources and the most funds, wouldn't yet be a joke. For this reason, SHIELD had to work hard to perform. As a result, they finally planned the recovery operation of New York with the federal military. Even Nick Fury, who is calm and has seen a lot of turmoil, is a little annoyed at the moment. There's no room for error. Let Phil Coulson lead the SHIELD anomaly team to deal with those Iron Men who don't know come out of that corner as soon as possible. No matter how much the price is paid, the operation must continue. At least New York, Liu Oshengdu, such a big city must guarantee the recovery work. Nick Fury got angry at the subordinate on the other end of the phone and hung up the phone. He looked at Pierce on the other side and asked, Pierce, how long will our Emperor be able to go into battle now? Hearing this, Pierce's face froze, and he said with some hesitation, Sir, although we have deployed quickly, the force that can be deployed immediately is only 30%, and we need to buy more time. Black Braze Dan slapped the table vigorously when he heard this, This is an order, and it is an order to fight back with all the strength at hand. Alexander, you understand the consequences? Yes, sir. It seems that it can only be delayed until now. Pierce's eyes flickered, and his heart was full of slander. From Pierce's point of view, SHIELD is the Snake Shield Bureau. If such a huge force is put into the battle at once, Jiading will suffer a lot of casualties. Under the circumstances that Hydra has penetrated so deeply into SHIELD, it must be Hydra that has more casualties. So Pierce delayed the order from Nick Fury as much as possible, but unexpectedly, a large number of mass-produced Iron Men suddenly appeared, beating up the wave of JTF reinforcements from the military. The plan to establish the SHIELD New York safe zone was hindered. Although he could continue to delay, that would definitely arouse Nick Fury's suspicion. So despite being distressed, it will cause a lot of meaningless casualties to your subordinates. But at this time Pierce also had to mobilize all his strength to join the JTF battle. Because Pierce also knows that if it goes too far, SHIELD will lose its leadership as the most powerful agent organization in the Federation. Hydra can't penetrate the plan of the Global Strategic Bureau, because of the sleeper plan of the Global Strategic Bureau, Hydra always thinks that the Global Strategic Bureau is an empty shell. Coupled with the hundreds of thousands of agents secretly trained by the Global Strategic Bureau, the number is too terrifying and huge, so Hydra has no way to start. Although due to the large number, it is inevitable that Hydra or other organizations will be recruited by Hydra or other organizations to infiltrate some agents after the sleepers are activated. But hundreds of thousands of people, even if many of them rebelled or even rebel because of the arduous task, it would not be able to hurt their bones. On the contrary, after the big waves wash away the sand, it will only leave a large number of elite soldiers for Chen Feng's Global Strategy Bureau. At that time, the status of the Integrated Global Strategic Bureau will not be underestimated. Coupled with the existence of the mysterious foundation, the status of a leader of SHIELD may be in jeopardy. So at this time Pierce can't drag Nick Fury back. Hydra and SHIELD have to reach a wonderful consensus state at this moment. Although a consensus has been reached, it is debatable where the main effort should be invested. Thinking of this, Pierce had no choice but to propose to Nick Fury at the side, apostrophe vertical bar Nick, I think we should first support the plan proposed by Phil Coulson. Hearing Pierce's words, the black marinated egg raised his eyebrows, and took a deep look at Pierce, you also think that those iron men should be dealt with limitedly. That's right, Nick. The technology leaked by the Stark Industry Group has already caused huge amounts of threats. We cannot allow Stark's technology to continue leaking, 
especially the mass production technology of MK2. Obadiah is a major threat, and we don't even know what kind of conspiracy this old dog is hiding in now. Now it seems that he might want to overthrow the Federation. We can't just sit back and watch this happen. The reorganized JTF on the military's side is enough to recover, Lee New O's, cities, and I think we should focus on stopping the plots of chaos separatists, for example. Hearing Pierce's words, Nick Fury nodded in deep agreement. You're talking about Alexander, the damn chaos separatists made the operation to retake New York fail, and we really should fully support Phil Coulson's operation. Order New York to give limited support to Phil Coulson's operation. Didn't they get Tony's help to be precise? They plan to capture some mass-produced Iron Men first, so that they can know how much MK2 technology the chaos separatists have absorbed and integrated. Nice plan, don't let me down Alexander. Yes sir. The corner of Alexander Pierce's mouth raised slightly. Once he got the technology of MK2, Hydra's technology ability, he will advance by leaps and bounds. Maybe he can also control a mass-produced Iron Man army in the future. By then. Maybe S-H-I-E-L-D then it becomes dot 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 snake and shield. Chapter 82 The Split Black Watch The must-produced Iron Man Mecha is actually a flesh armor. This is the 13th Defense Zone in Manhattan. JTF 21st Battle Group Request reinforcements. We have been attacked by unknown people. Repeat, repeat. We have been attacked by unknown people. Manhattan's District 13 consists of two blocks, military lumber, sandbags, and wooden fortifications that turn a former fire station into a JTF fortress. Disgruntled crowded civilians huddled in the fire station, watching the battle between the JTF Joint Combat Force and the unknown assailant in horror. After the JTF's counterattack to retake New York was attacked by a mass-produced Iron Man mecha controlled by Obadiah, the JTF's troops were on high alert. It didn't take long for the results of the attack, and as expected, the mass-produced Iron Man mechas began to attack the defense zone at Map F in the New York area. At the same time, Attacks by unknown armed forces were also discovered in many cities. Then an unexpected incident broke out. The Black Watch, the federal secret force that was originally in charge of controlling the infected areas of various cities, actually split at this time and began to kill each other. Under the chaotic situation, even the federal military and SHIELD could not figure out the truth immediately. It was under this extremely chaotic time that more JTFs were attacked in New York. Almost all the mass-produced Iron Man mechas that attacked the TF defense zone were armed to the teeth. It is Obadiah's mass-produced Iron Man armor that is attacking the number 13 defense zone of the 983 team of the TF Joint Operations Department. The weapons and equipment of these mass-produced Iron Man mechas are obviously castrated a lot compared with the genuine Mark II Iron Man armor. For example, there is no Mark II Iron Armor's iconic pulse beam emitter located on the chest and palm, and it cannot emit pulsed particle beams. For firepower. It is equipped with some special individual Gatling machine guns, small rocket launchers, carrying anti-tank rocket launchers and other equipment. Sex is even worse. But although the combat effectiveness of these mass-produced Iron Man armors is far inferior to the genuine Mark II Iron Man armor, they still make JTF lose their temper. The JTF troops in the 13th block discovered the enemy as soon as they were attacked and launched a counter-attack, but they immediately encountered the same encounter as other F troops. Ordinary JTF troops lack effective countermeasures, and generally the weapons that can hit these mass-produced Iron Man meshes are usually firearms. The embarrassing problem is that the weapons in the hands of ordinary soldiers are all NATO standard weapons, most of which are, AGS, M16 or M4 assault rifles with a caliber of 5.56 45mm. Even if these assault rifles use M995 armor piercing bullets, it is still tickling for those mass-produced Iron Man meshes. Even the 7.62 caliber used by the M14 is difficult to penetrate its armor. Only the 12.7 caliber M2 HP heavy machine gun and the same caliber Barrett and other anti-material sniper rifles can barely cause the same damage with armor-piercing bullets. However, heavy machine guns and anti-material sniper rifles are not as flexible as other firearms, and it is difficult to hit the target, and those individual Stinger anti-aircraft missiles are difficult to lock such a small and fast target. Therefore, Although the mobility of these mass-produced Iron Man mechas is not as good as the original Mark II, they still bring great trouble to the JTF troops. Although the weapons and ammunition carried by these mass-produced mechas are limited, if each attack does not attack the vital areas such as ammunition depots and fuel piles, it is difficult to cause serious damage. But these gadgets are like flies, constantly harassing and difficult to be destroyed by ordinary JTF troops, making UTF troops in various regions exhausted. This time is the same when the mass-produced Iron Man mecha that attacked the number 13 defense area was just about to evacuate, suddenly a faster red and yellow metal color figure passed by quickly. The two micro-missiles quickly locked it and launched it quickly, and accurately hit the mass-produced Iron Man mecha at a speed of about Mach 10, which was too late to dodge. After seeing this scene, 
The soldiers of the JTF unit in the No. 13 defense zone who had been attacked several times and had been passively beaten immediately burst into cheers. Show me what you are. It was Tony Stark who came back to battle. Tony, wearing the MK4 steel battle suit, landed steadily in front of the down mass produced Iron Man mecha. The Iron Man mecha, which was hit by two micro missiles, was severely damaged, and the outer armor had been shape shifted off. Tony, who discussed with Phil Coulson to capture a mass produced Iron Man mesh, is now halfway through the goal and the opponent can't escape. However, the goal was progressing well, but Tony from at the moment didn't look good. Originally, Tony expected that these mass-produced machines should be just clumsy products controlled by inferior artificial intelligence, but looking at their various control actions, it looks more like someone is operating them. However, at the moment has damaged the mass-produced Iron Man mecha with severe shape-shifting. Although its movement is limited, it can still operate and fight back against Tony. Could this thing be controlled by someone? Tony raised his hand and fired the pulse beam cannon in the palm of his hand. One shot directly hit the mass-produced Iron Man who was paralyzed in front of him, and the right arm of the mass-produced Iron Man mecha was directly smashed. J-A-R-V-I-S, is that? What? A human body? Sir, according to calculations, that should be the appearance of a part of human tissue after being scorched by high temperature. But if this guy is human dot 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 heck, he's still struggling, even trying to fight back. Is he really human? Tony stepped forward and stepped on the mass-produced Iron Man who was still struggling and writhing on the ground, then grabbed its helmet and slammed it hard. MK2's output increased and it was directly torn off. Gift crab. What kind of monster is this? What caught Tony's A's could only be described as a humanoid existence, a twisted mass of scarlet flesh, which seemed to be closely connected with the mecha. Tony's whole scalp was numb, and it was naturally such a twisted mixture of flesh and blood to control this mass-produced Iron Man machine. J-A-R-V-I-S, enter analysis mode. Sir, after the analysis, this should be some kind of flesh and blood life form. Its nervous system and flesh and blood have been completely integrated with the mecha. This creature is likely to have been converted from a species called human beings. It's so ugly. Tony looked at the completely skinless mass of scarlet flesh and nerves. Dot 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 the humanoid head like a flesh and blood mesh screaming in pain. Tony raised his right hand slowly, and the pulse beam cannon was fired to end his pain. At this time, Phil Coulson, Agent May and a heavily armed shield anomalous team quickly came to the wreckage of the Iron Man mecha. Looking at the mass-produced Iron Man mesh that was no longer moving, Phil Coulson asked Tony, Mr. Tony, did you just kill the pilot of this thing? Do you think this thing dot 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 is a human? I suggest that you should not touch it without wearing protective gear. Only then did everyone see the twisted scarlet flesh inside the mass-produced Iron Man mesh. Woad for what kind of monster is this? Chapter 83 All countries are paralyzed, the black watchman corrupted by flesh and blood. Just when Tony and Phil Coulson had just eliminated an Iron Man mesh integrated with flesh and blood, they were just about to bring it back to a nearby research facility for research. JTF's otherwise calm radio suddenly became chaotic. Tony looked at Phil Coulson who was stunned just after receiving a voice communication, and walked up to him impatiently and asked, What? Did something happen? Phil Coulson put down the radio in his hand a little numbly, as if he hadn't reacted to the terrible news just now. Phil Coulson said bitterly, Black Watch dot 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 something went wrong. What happened? A large number of military forces in the Black Watch suddenly defected and destroyed the separation wall of the infected area and a large number of zombies and mutated creatures poured out of the infected area. Tony is not an idiot either, so he naturally knows what this means. The Black Watch troops have always been responsible for handling and controlling the infected area. Even though the Black Watch did a bad job before, they at least controlled the infection of the biochemical strain to a very small area. Within. And now the Black Watch has actually destroyed the separation walls of the infected areas one after another, allowing the infection to start to expand indiscriminately which means that all the efforts made before are likely to be in vain. Tony cursed a little madly, Shet, what are you doing? Don't those bastards of Blackwatch know what they are doing? Hearing this, Phil Coulson's face became even more bitter, Blackwatch is even killing each other, and no one knows what happened. At this moment, the JTF in the 13th defense area suddenly sent a radio, this is the 13th defense area, we are besieged by a large number of mutant creatures, damn it, there are also black watch troops attacking us in cooperation with those mutant creatures, we have casualties heavy, repeat, request support from all nearby friendly units, we are suffering from severe attrition, and black watches troops are coordinating with those biochemical monsters to attack us, after hearing this radio, Tony, Agent May, and Phil Coulson all looked in disbelief, after they looked at each other, they immediately made a decision and went to reinforce is the already precarious number 13 defense zone. With the activation of the anti-gravity device on Mark IV's hands and feet, 
Mark IV quickly lifted into the air and flew towards the 13th defense area. Tony saw a terrible scene. Countless zombies and mutated creatures are attacking the number 13 defense zone. Under normal circumstances, those zombies and the mutated creatures would definitely be stopped and wiped out by the powerful firepower of the human army, but the frightening thing is that behind those endless monsters are the troops of Blackwatch. The Black Watch troops are actually using all kinds of firepower to attack the defense area of the JTF Joint Combat Force. Under the powerful firepower of the Black Watch troops and the constant attack of biochemical monsters, the number 13 defense area is already crumbling. Tony joined the battle immediately, and as Iron Man suddenly charged into Black Watch's troops from the air, Black Watch's troops suffered the same encounter as JTF troops. There is absolutely no way to take the fast flexible and powerful Mark IV. With the only M1A2 Abrams main battle tank and three infantry fighting vehicles in the company destroyed, and the mortar position was also killed by Tony, those Black Watch soldiers attacked Tony with undiminished morale. Surprised, Tony had to bite the bullet and continue to destroy the entire Black Watch company. At this time, Phil Coulson and the others came to speed up the destruction of the Black Watch troops, but at this time, Tony and Phil Coulson discovered in horror that the faces of these Black Watch troops hidden under the gas masks were no longer human faces. When Phil Coulson fatally wounded a Black Watch soldier with an assault rifle, something horrific happened and the soldier's head burst open. Then there was a foreign trade twist, with horny horns. Flesh parasites appeared. The terrible parasites actually controlled the human body and attacked Phil Coulson. Phil Coulson shot another shot at the head of the parasite that had replaced the original human head to destroy it, and the Black Watch soldier who was infected by the parasite really died. After eliminating this group of abnormal Black Watch troops, Tony, Phil Coulson, Agent May, and the surviving SHIE LD agents were all frightened, their scalps were numb, and their skin was covered with goosebumps. At this time, Phil Coulson picked up the helmet recorder of a Black Watch soldier and extracted a piece of video data inside. A few minutes later, Phil Coulson tremblingly called High Braised Egg. Director Nick, we have encountered a very difficult problem, and I have transferred the video data to you. Ten minutes later, Black Braised Egg and Alexander Pierce looked at the horrific video recorded on the big screen with numb faces. Several Black Watch soldiers were running desperately and attacking their colleagues, but they were still surrounded until they were caught by their colleagues. Zero seeking flowers. A crazy Black Watch soldier walked to the side who was struggling constantly, and then seemed to be taking something out of his mouth. Under the soldier's horrified gaze, he saw a mass of twisted scarlet flesh pulled out of the crazy soldier's mouth. Immediately afterwards, this mass of wriggling, flesh and blood parasite-like things were directly stuffed into his mouth. The young soldier's eyes almost burst open, his pupils were filled with blood in an instant, and blood flowed down his eyes. Blue veins bloomed on the soldier's neck, he stretched out his hand weakly, and after a while let out a terrible roar. Then the soldier became like the other crazy soldiers, joining in the hunt for his fellow soldiers. Nick, Fury and Pierce also stared at each other in shock and dumbfounded. Their palms were sweaty. Even zombies don't have such parasites that parasitize the human body and steal everything from you. Zero. After 30 minutes, the high-level leaders of all major countries in the world saw this video. Those countries that serve as Eagle Source's followers, what Gallic Chicken, the British and Commonwealth member countries, the Cherry Blossom Country, the Pickle Country, and the Prussian Commonwealth. Even Mao Xun and Dong Wang's rabbit, who were at odds with Ying Jiang, became numb after seeing this scene. Originally, there was a civil strife in the White Eagle Federation, and everyone was still watching the fun. The only ones who were anxious were his younger brother, goddaughter, and dog. Now seeing this kind of ghost thing, everyone is paralyzed. Even if unscientific things like zombies appear, in fact, everyone doesn't care, because under the powerful firepower of modern weapons, the number of zombies is useless. Nothing can destroy humanity without causing terrible mass air pollution. But now that this kind of thing that can parasitize the human army and use human weapons to cooperate with corpse waves and mutated creatures appears, people are paralyzed. What's even more frightening is that those human armored weapons, tanks, armored vehicles, and airplanes will all be parasitized by that weird flesh and blood substance, and after being parasitized, they will be used to attack humans. Now everyone can't sit still. If this kind of weird and terrifying thing spreads, wouldn't it be the end of mankind? Just when this video was being valued by various countries, a video released to the world caught everyone's attention. Escaped from the pursuit of Task Force 141, Obadiah appeared in the sight of all mankind and brought his declaration of war. Dot. Chapter 84 Global Panic Countries trembling under the power of containment. 008 New York, NBC television station headquarters. At the moment, the headquarters of this television station is completely occupied by mass produced flesh iron man meshes and there are also a large number of parasitic Black Watch soldiers stationed here, and most of the personnel in the TV station have been parasitized by parasites. The few who were not parasitized were because of the order of the alienated Hobadiah who was wearing a large Mark II mecha. In the live broadcast room, 
there were parasitic soldiers watching covetously, and almost all colleagues had been mutated by parasites. The shivering cameraman opened the camera tremblingly. Obadiah was wearing the Iron Overlord mesh manufactured by the Mark II technology and a helmet, without revealing his true face at all, standing quietly in front of the camera. 3, 2, 1, live broadcast dot 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 start. At the same time, on YouTube, and in all places where NBC TV signals can be watched, all saw this scene in the live broadcast room. Good evening. Federation, 503 Perhaps many of you know me, I am wanted by the Federation, former director of Stark Industries Group, Obadiah. As you can see, my Federation survived the beheading operation and gained the power to change the world. I have mastered the blessing of the great loving father, who has given me the power of the abnormal containment 008 that you often say. In order to repay the Federation's kindness, I decided to let go of the past, and generously let everyone, like me, receive the blessing of the great loving father, the hypocritical Federation the ugly allies, and the stupid human beings. You will soon become the same beings who receive the blessings of my loving father. After Obadiah finished speaking, the camera of the live broadcast turned around, and a city covered with snow under the hazy clouds appeared in people's field of vision. See, this is Jersey City, and now, as the spokesperson of the great creation, I will bring blessings and glorious evolution to this city. GGGG, soon, you little human beings, you will all be blessed by the great loving father. After Obadiah finished speaking, he saw a huge amount of blue light falling from the sky and hitting the satellite city of New York, Jersey City. However, there was no explosion or other phenomena in this city, but it was accompanied by blue light, as if the plane was torn apart, after the flicker of energy disappeared. A group of huge amounts of twisted flesh and blood creation appeared in the city center, it quickly swallowed everything around, and attached to all buildings within five kilometers of itself as the center. A flesh and blood layer was quickly formed and countless flesh and blood blanket bacteria immediately attached to all the ground that could be attached. Afterwards, the blood-colored mist filled the city, and all the lives that inhaled the mist, as long as they were not protected, all screamed and bled, and their bodies twitched endlessly, then turned into a terrifying mutant creature. Accompanied by this picture, Obadiah's distorted and extremely satisfied voice came from the voiceover, See, this is the blessing of the great and loving father. Welcome to join the glorious evolution. Soon, with the authority bestowed upon me by my loving father, I will let the army of the dead swallow up the entire federation and even the entire world. This is the price you have to pay. Immediately after that, countless zombies and mutated creatures poured out of the nest, and the terrifying crowd of dense corpses made people feel horrified. At this moment, the whole world saw the scene of Jersey City being instantly corrupted. Fuck. How is it possible? Obadiah actually controls the power of the contained object 008. Seeing this scene, Nick Fury slammed the pen on the table and slapped the table. I'm so mad. Pierce on the side was also shocked, watching the terrible scene, even distorted the space and directly corroded and alienated the terrible weapon that alienated the entire city. Strictly speaking, this thing is a more terrifying attack than nuclear weapons. Even the most powerful nuclear weapons of mankind cannot completely destroy a city and kill all the people inside. But Obadiah, who claimed to have control of the authority of the contained object 008, did such a thing easily. Pierce also realized the seriousness of the matter. Hydra wants to rule the world but they just want to rule the world instead of destroying mankind. But Obadiah, a lunatic, seems to want to destroy all mankind. He even destroyed a city lived through the live broadcast. So the question is, how soon will he start attacking the second city? Is this a space-based weapon launched by a satellite, or something else? Even SHIELD and Hydra couldn't help but tremble at this terrifying power, instantly turning a city infected and corrupted into a paradise for infected creatures. These five stars are too scary. It only needs to attack several important cities of the Federation one by one, and the entire Federation can be completely destroyed. At that time, I am afraid that nuclear weapons will not be able to stop the spread of infection. Because the actual lethality of nuclear weapons mainly depends on nuclear radiation, the lethality of the normal central explosion point is only 2 or 3 kilometers in diameter. Nuclear radiation is extremely deadly to ordinary humans. But what about those infected creatures? Will they really be killed by nuclear radiation? And can nuclear weapons really destroy such nests? How many nuclear weapons would it take to destroy such imitated lair? What if Obadiah created more such lairs? Black brazed eggs and Pierce are already numb. A shield director, a hydro undercover leader, both of them felt deeply powerless at the moment, and at this moment, perhaps they can only place their hopes on the foundation. In the farm bunker of the Global Strategic Bureau, General Lois calmly hung up the phone he had urgently called to ask for news. The top federal officials and the military couldn't sit still anymore, and asked him eagerly whether the Foundation could stop Obadiah from destroying the world. Not long ago, Adam Benford, the chairman of the Federation General Assembly, 
hung up the phone and came over to inquire. General Lois gave him an affirmative answer, which made the President of the Federation feel at ease. The phone number of the Chief Speaker has long been bombarded by phone calls from various allies and heads of other human countries. All the countries that saw this scene in the video and verified it were all paralyzed. Originally, everyone was conserving their strength or waiting and watching, or gloating about the federal pill, but now everyone can't sit still. You Federation failed to hunt down Obadiah and let this sky control such a dangerous thing. This is also the first time people in the world saw the terrible destruction of the containment. Created a terrifying lair that could infect an entire city in an instant. Is this the power of containment? At this time, everyone thought of the previous rumors about the Foundation. Can the Foundation really contain such a terrifying existence as 4.9? At the same time, on the retribution, Chen Feng watched the rumors of his instant liquidation. Ding! Obadiah used the power of containment 008 to destroy a city and shocked the entire federation. You have obtained 5 million rumors. Question mark. Ding. The video of Obadiah using the power of containment 008 to destroy the city spread rapidly, shocking the entire NATO allies, and you have gained 10 million rumors. Question mark. Ding. The image of Obadiah using the containment 008 to destroy the city has caused panic around the world, and you have gained 15 million rumor points. Question mark. Congratulations on unlocking the achievement, Global Panic. Chapter 85 United Nations Resolution The world needs the power of the foundation. The current situation can only be described as chaos. After Obadiah turned the entire Jersey City into a biochemical brood in a very short period of time, it can be said to be a global panic. Except for Admiral Lois and Ophelia who knew the research direction of the 935 team and the insiders who knew the existence of Element 115 were not frightened, all countries caused a certain degree of confusion. Admiral Lois and Ophelia, who are knowledgeable people, know that Obadiah obtained a super weapon heritage manufactured by the 935 group and the key to control the living dead man core purely by chance. A secret satellite code named Purgatory's Gate, on which the 935 team uses 115 elements to manufacture weapons. This armed satellite can emit a particle beam condensed with element 115. This kind of ray can temporarily open the plane gap manufacturing node so that the biochemical brood that has been positioned in another doomsday world can be transmitted to this world. There is a high concentration of biochemical viruses around the biochemical brood, and it will release a large amount of virus-laden gas and spread to every corner of the city and surrounding suburbs. Under the diffusion of such a high concentration of virus gas, anyone who does not wear fully enclosed protective clothing will definitely suffer from infection and lethal mutations in a high concentration virus environment. If you look at it this way, this weapon is undoubtedly much more terrifying than nuclear weapons. Not only is the range of damage terrible, but it will also create a large number of zombies and infected creatures. It will constantly create a large army of infected people through biochemical broods, and continue to pollute the surrounding area. Environment, making it difficult to recover. Definitely such a powerful weapon will definitely have certain restrictions. First of all, the lair where the 935 team entered the biochemical doomsday plane was limited. Secondly, using this weapon will consume 115 elements. After all, 115 elements are not products on the blue star, but come from the universe, and the 939 team does not have much in stock. And after Widow Sister and Sky led the team not to enter the lunar base of the 935 team, Chen Feng also found a lot of stocks of 115 elements in the lunar base. Obadiah doesn't have many 115 elements on hand, which is not enough to support him to carry out continuous and multiple attacks. Sure enough, after destroying Jersey City, the weapons controlled by Obadiah launched another attack, but the targets were all satellite cities in New York State. There is an interval of eight hours between each attack. The second unlucky city is by Yuan City. In just one day, Obadiah destroyed a total of three medium-sized satellite cities close to New York, although the panic caused by destroying the other two is smaller than that of Jersey City. But Chen Feng on the punishment also gained a total of 50 million rumor points. At this time, due to the huge disaster caused by Obadiah and the great threat to human civilization, the United Nations held an emergency meeting. After discussions in emergency meetings in various countries, the governments of various countries have reached a unanimous conclusion that they must have the support of the Foundation if they want to stop Obadiah from using the power of the contained objects to destroy the world. On this day, the human beings on the Blue Star fully realized the terrifying power of the contained objects, the deaths of at least 5 million people in three medium-sized cities, and the army of mutated creatures continuously produced by the subsequent three biochemical broods. What's more serious is that because the armed satellite of Purgatory's Gate has adopted many black technologies of the 935 group, it can not only easily change its orbit, but also has an optical camouflage made of 115 elements, making it difficult to observe. With the current technical level of the Blue Star countries, it is impossible to counteract it. We can only watch helplessly as this armed satellite launches attacks one after another. 
destroying three cities. At the moment, the hapless New York City has been surrounded by three biochemical broods, and the army of infected people, like a terrifying wave, has begun to march towards New York City. This economic hub of the Federation will be destroyed at any time. And once this iconic city is destroyed, it will deal a huge blow to the Federation, and even directly defeat the Federation's will to resist. For this reason, the federal military had to urgently deploy a large number of troops to reinforce the JTF in the area. And at the moment General Lois's phone was maxed out again. It was also at this time that General Lois finally connected to the communication channel Chen Feng left for him. After answering the call of the five-star General Lois, Chen Feng's calm and composed voice came from the other end of the microphone. Old Sergeant Major, I guess something big happened on the Blue Planet Terror, General Lois said with a dry smile. Commander, the phone calls from the chief speaker and the leaders of those big countries are about to blow up my personal number. Speaking of which, General Lois gave a dry cough and recounted lightly, Obeyed I used the power of containment 008 and the super weapons left by the 935 team to create three broods and destroyed the three satellite cities of New York City. There was a lot of movement. As he spoke, he lowered his voice and said, Commander, I think this is an opportunity. If the Foundation can demonstrate our power and handle the incident, then the Foundation will be recognized by the United Nations and take this opportunity to sign an in-depth cooperation treaty with the five benefactors. Dot. I understand, old Sergeant Major, you can pass on my reply, and the Foundation will complete the operation and deployment authorization as soon as possible. After the discussion between the two, Chen Feng on the bridge of the Retribution hung up the communication. How long will it take to reach low Earth orbit? Report to the commander, we can reach low Earth orbit in one hour. It's time. Miss 2B, through the communication system of the Retribution, issue a combat mobilization order in my name, use all available forces at hand, and prepare to participate in combat operations. One hour later, Miss 2B, the Yoroa troops you brought from the headquarters moved to this low Earth orbit coordinates. I need you to capture an armed satellite, and after capturing it, transport it back to the retribution. Detective Natasha Romanoff, Detective Sky, Blue Star was attacked by Obadiah not long ago, and three cities of the White Eagle Federation near New York 190 were destroyed, causing at least 5 million casualties. Now the three cities have become three biochemical broods that continuously produce mutated creatures. It is very likely that there will be tens of millions of mutated creatures and an army of infected people killing New York City. Everyone who heard the news suddenly was stunned. More than five million casualties? We will carry out an emergency combat mission in one hour, and I will lead the team to airdrop from low Earth orbit to the ground. Miss Gwen, since you are a civilian, you can voluntarily choose whether to join the war. As SHIELD agents, Widow and Sky both looked filled with righteous indignation and bitter hatred. When they heard that Chen Feng was going to join the war, they were obliged to do so. And Gwen over there had a confused look on his face, but he was eager to try. And Miss Ally Zero over there, I think we need to talk about an extremely confidential matter, which is related to whether the abnormal containment object 008 can be contained, but you are the key person in this incident. But before Ally Zero could reply, Miss Tooby on the side said worriedly, Commander, if we conduct orbital warfare with our current strength, I think your rower's troops should follow you in orbital combat as soon as possible. Airborne, you cannot do without troops by your side. Or you shouldn't be involved in something like an orbital drop. Chen Feng smiled and took a metal military whistle from his pocket silently, who said we don't have reinforcements. Chapter 86 Comprehensive Strengthening Who is calling the fleet? Exclamation mark. Now the Foundation's strength wants to settle the crisis that has emerged and to complete the containment of the abnormal containment 008, there is indeed a huge shortage of combat power. However, Chen Feng had the chance to win, and his confident demeanor infected the people in the captain's room. Whether it's soldiers, officers, or those ladies with extraordinary combat power, they firmly believe that the commander-in-chief of the Foundation will have the ability to turn the tide of battle in one fell swoop. Now that the decisive battle is underway, it's time to exchange all the things accumulated in the previous battles into forces. 50 million rumors, as well as the various strengthening cards and upgrade guards obtained before, will greatly increase the power at hand in a short period of time. Chen Feng is not a mediocre person who hides his strength all day long, is still hesitant when it's time for stud, and finally misses the opportunity to fight. Now is not the time to pretend to be a pig and eat a tiger, it's time to show off your boat power. Question mark whether to use special item upgrade card, strengthening S level rare item, Kriak Sentry. Make sure to use the special item upgrade card. Question mark. Ding. The strengthening item has been successfully strengthened. The creature sentry, the effect has been changed. Question mark. The faded creature whistle can recruit a creature death army of 20,000 people after it is blown. The cooldown time is one month. Question mark. This kind of combat power is not enough, and it needs to continue to upgrade. Would you like to continue upgrading the faded creature sentry? To purchase a medium level special item upgrade card, you need 5 million rumor points. Question mark. 
Chen Feng gritted his teeth. He still has to upgrade. Question mark. Continued to upgrade. S level rare item Krieg military whistle. Upgrade strengthening has been completed. The effect has been changed. Question mark. The dim Krieger whistle, after blowing, can recruit a 50,000 Krieger mixed army. The cooldown time is two months. Question mark. A Krieg mixed army of 50,000 people. Although this kind of combat power can steadily solve the current crisis, the combat power shown is still not enough. Do you want to continue to upgrade the S level rare and dim Krieger sentry? Buying a high level special item upgrade guard will cost 15 million rumor points. Question mark. The price is too dark. Question mark. Yes. Continue to upgrade. S level rare item Krieg military whistle. Upgrade strengthening has been completed. The effect has been changed. The Krieg military whistle containing psychic light can recruit an elite Krieg mixed army of 100,000 people after it is blown, accompanied by a human empire navy fleet responsible for transportation. Question mark. 20 million rumor points have been consumed, but Chen Feng did not stop. Question mark. Do you want to consume 10 million rumors points? Upgrade the electronic fight exving formation, and carry out airspace transformation. Question mark. Yes. Ding. The strengthening upgrade of the electronic tactical aircraft Xving formation has been completed. Question mark. FFR-41 electronic fighter and FRX-99 unmanned fighter have completed airframe strengthening, and have completed aerospace transformation. Question mark. The number of FRX-99 drones has increased to 12. Question mark. FRX-41 and FRX-99 fighter components have been fully upgraded, with deflection shields, nano repair armor components, and EML electromagnetic launcher, systems. Seeing that there were nearly 60 million rumors on the account, at the moment has been quickly emptied by nearly half, and it was spent again before it was warmed up. Chen Feng sighed, saving money is still difficult, but looking at the system store, which is worth 10 million pieces, and comes from Battlefield World Technologies anti-air, air-to-ground suppression mothership, Chen Feng still gritted his teeth and bought two. Ding, Commander, you have purchased the Gloria-class air-to-ground suppression mothership, and the ship will enter the set airspace. Orbit to assemble at the specified time. Question mark. In a short period of time, Chen Feng has already spent 50 million Rima points, but this is only an operation completed in just a few tens of seconds. So at the moment, Lieutenant, Miss 2B, and the widows, Sky, Gwen, and Allies are all looked at Chen Feng suspiciously. He took out a shiny metal military whistle and blew it. The clever whistle sounded on the bridge, and Chen Feng blew three times in total. The whistle sounded around and lasted for a long time, as if it was reverberating around. Just when everyone was puzzled, the communicator in the captain's room suddenly shuddered and shouted to Chen Feng, Commander, received a friendly communication. Vertical bar. The content of the communication is, who is calling the fleet? A smile appeared on Chen Feng's face, and he instructed the communications soldier to say, respond to the other party. It is Foundation Commander Chen Feng who is calling the fleet. Let them assemble in the designated airspace immediately. Miss 2B had a clear look on her face. Sure enough, the commander has prepared reinforcements and backup troops. She deserves to be a trustworthy commander. Widow Sister and Sky glanced at each other, feeling the shock in each other's pupils. The Foundation's only one aircraft carrier, the Retribution, was enough to shock them for a whole day. They didn't expect that the Foundation actually had the power of an aerospace fleet. The technology of the Emotional Foundation has metamorphosized to the level of interstellar civilization, but it is still silently guarding human beings? So how terrifying is the true strength of the Foundation? The two of them were terrified when they thought about it carefully, and they didn't dare to think about it any further. Gwen and allies are on the side. These two children who haven't seen much in the world, are somewhat numb. Even if the Foundation has a ticket for Star Destroyer, these two people might look numb and get used to it. Dot. Everyone was still in shock, but the female messenger over there had already quickly gone through the process, communicated with the other party, and looked at Chen Feng, who was waiting for the news, to reply. Commander, I received a reply from the fleet, friendly units are gathering. Please wait a moment. Commander, a hyperspace signal has been received. A fleet is jumping into hyperspace. Commander, there is a high energy reaction ahead, it's a friendly signal. Accompanied by the sweet voice of the female communication soldier. One after another golden energy wormholes in front of them reacted, and one after another behemoths hundreds of meters long appeared in everyone's field of vision. This is the Imperial Navy. We have three unyielding class light cruisers and ten transport ships ordered to join the commander's battle order. Immediately afterwards, two blue rays of light flickered, and two relatively small ships with a height of only about 500 meters also appeared in front of everyone. Commander, two Gloria class air-to-ground suppression motherships are here to join your battle order. In just a few minutes. A battleship formation consisting of 16 air and space battleships has been assembled in the orbit of Blue Star. These are almost all huge monsters with a length of hundreds of meters. Even if they are quietly parked on the track, they still give people a sense of huge amounts of oppression. Chen Feng suddenly felt proud, 
and said to the signal soldier on the side, send a message to Sergeant Lois, and at the same time turn on the signal lens, let him inform the United Nations. Let's say the Foundation has completed its operational deployment and is preparing for orbital descent operations. The female messenger's face turned red with excitement when she heard the words, and quickly and skillfully sent the message. Soon, Sergeant Major Lowe in the Strategic Bureau bunker excitedly slapped the table and applauded loudly. Send a message to the Federal Military and the Parliament. Just say that the Foundation has completed deployment and is preparing for orbital airborne operations, and let JTF cooperate with our actions. Orbital descent operation? Among the dozen or so warships. Dot 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 was a dot 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 massive orbital airborne force deployed? Dot. Chapter 87 Who is right when the star shines? Confused Natasha Romanoff. At this moment, the eyes of the whole world are all focused on the low Earth orbit. This Foundation aerospace fleet, which has attracted the attention of the whole world, is already ready to go. With just one order, it will stage an unprecedented assault operation in human history, an orbital airborne assault operation. On the blue planet Terra, when it was still difficult for human countries to land humans on the moon, the huge aerospace fleet of the Foundation showed that they possessed power far beyond the imagination of human countries. Fortunately, this force exists to ensure the survival of humanity, as well as contain the anomalies. Although there are still some forces in various countries who have various concerns, but SHIELD is in the forefront. No matter how powerful the Foundation is, it is just another transcendent force like SHIELD. Now facing Obadiah, who claims to control the power of the abnormal containment 008, and the terrifying force that can destroy the entire world, human countries have finally chosen to let the Foundation intervene. At the same time, the United Nations passed an emergency resolution and many countries jointly formed the United Nations Expeditionary Force and sent it to the White Eagle Federation to fight together and face the common enemy of mankind. The captain's room of the retribution has become Chen Feng's temporary headquarters. Agent Natasha Romanoff came in with a cup of steaming lava latte, put it on the desk and said softly, Commander, your coffee. Seeing Chen Feng who was still busy, she couldn't help feeling a little distressed. Just put the coffee there, and Xwing 833 will conduct a combat simulation on the combat plan again and make adjustments here and here. Chen Feng picked up the coffee and drank it in one gulp, his eyes still fixed on the screen. This is the first time Chen Feng has commanded an army of at least 200,000 people in a campaign. Yes, this is a campaign, not the previous containment operations that can only be called operations. Commanding a battle of hundreds of thousands of people is not an easy task. In ancient times, even in World War I and World War II, anyone who could command hundreds of thousands of troops to fight could be called a famous general without exception. Dot. Ordinary people simply don't have this powerful command ability to coordinate hundreds of thousands of people's operations, ranging from logistical support to hundreds of thousands of people, to planning troop coordination, personnel deployment, and combat plans. If a person with insufficient ability is allowed to take such a position, it will undoubtedly cause a terrible disaster. Thanks to the professional characteristics of the psychic commander, after Chen Feng's brain has been strengthened several times, Chen Feng's brain thinking ability and computing ability have already far exceeded ordinary people. After being equipped with Xfeng's mainframe upgrade, the terrifying computing ability has now created the most simple configuration in human history, but also the most powerful command system. It can be said that if Chen Feng is thrown back to any period in history, and he is asked to command an army of hundreds of thousands or even millions, he can handle it with ease. After matching the terrifying computing power of the Xfeng mainframe, in just a few hours, Chen Feng completed the project that would have taken thousands of people at least a month to complete with just one person and one mainframe. Deployment of the combat plan. Relying on Chen Feng's current powerful command ability, if he wants, he can even easily deploy this army to fine grain combat operations at the company and platoon level without any deployment problems. With this command ability alone, Chen Feng is enough to rank among the world's famous generals. After confirming the combat deployment on the third day, Chen Feng breathed a sigh of relief. Xfeng, use the current perfect plan as a blueprint, and immediately send the combat plan to the computers of all command units. Chen Feng raised his hand and glanced at the military watch on his wrist. One hour has passed since Miss Tubi led Ju has troops to capture the armed satellite of Team 935. Chen Feng calculated the time and muttered, It's almost time. Then he raised his head, looked at the widow sister who had been watching him operate for a long time, and suddenly asked, Have you learned my deployment just now? Detective Natasha Romanoff. The widow stared at him in a daze. A big smile appeared on her face. Right after Miss 2B set off, Chen Feng first had a secret conversation with Miss Eliza for more than 10 minutes, and then began to conduct combat deployment in the captain's room. During this period, the widow sister was directly captured by the strong man and served as his temporary adjutant. This may be because Chen Feng thought that the widow sister had more commanding skills, so he specially cultivated and gave her a chance. Don't look at the widow sister as an agent who wears tights all day long to lurk and carry out secret operations. 
The image is more like an assassin, a killer. In fact, her, aged, command ability is very strong and very capable. As for why the command ability of the widow sister is specially cultivated, in Chen Feng's view, although she is loyal to SHIELD, as long as everything goes according to Chen Feng's plan, he believes that he will be able to achieve his deep goal after all. That is to integrate the human services on the parallel world Earth, that is, the Terra Blue planet in this world. The Marvel Universe has too many crises, too many hazards coming from the universe. However, the superheroes of human beings only know how to fight in the nest all day long, and SHIELD is so powerful even in the later stage of technology. As a result, for ordinary Terra Blue Star people, there is still a technical blockade there which makes the overall technology of Terra Blue Star stagnate. It is called the diffusion of protective technology to protect human beings. In Chen Feng's view, this concept is nonsense. Natasha Romanoff, who is astute, can naturally see that this is Chen Feng's special cultivation. So when he was Chen Feng's temporary adjutant, Shiz Hong carefully observed Chen Feng's operation. However, his series of dazzling operations and combat planning and deployment made the widow dazzled. Natasha Romanoff licked her lower lip, then tried to think hard and asked Chen Feng for some operations that she didn't understand, Commander, I still don't understand many things, all your deployment and ideas dot 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 for example, dot. This is to support the strategy carried out at the Redstone Fort base. After Chen Feng's patient explanation, Natasha Romanoff felt that her thoughts suddenly became clear. Just then, Natasha Romanoff caught Chen Feng off guard and asked ten questions, Commander, I don't understand one thing. I am obviously an agent of SHIELD. Why did you teach me this and show me all these secret combat deployments? Looking at Natasha Romanoff who was in a daze, Chen Feng said definitely, because we are all human beings, you are extremely talented to human beings, and you should make greater contributions to human civilization, not just as a killer, an assassin. This point has nothing to do with what kind of force or organization you are, but whether you regard yourself as a member of human beings. Chen Feng closed the computer, patted her on the shoulder and encouraged, study hard. Agent Natasha Romanoff, the combat operation is about to begin, and you will be a temporary adjutant until the end of the operation. As he spoke, Chen Feng walked out of the captain's room, looking at the already busy bridge, there were less than 30 minutes left before the scheduled battle began. At this time, the sound of Xvan came. Commander, we have received a communication from your rower's unit, green signal. The target has been successfully captured. Chen Feng's body trembled slightly. He took a deep breath and said to the female signal soldier who had been waiting for orders, send an orange signal to the combat troops, and everything will proceed according to the predetermined plan. Looking at Chen Feng's back, Natasha Romanoff suddenly began to waver and doubt the idea of S-H-I-E-L-D, who is the right path. That figure, the image in her heart seemed to be becoming more and more magnificent. Dot. Chapter 88 Orbital Assault We step into the battlefield with both feet. After obeyed I used the armed satellite to attack the Earth's surface for the third time. The time passed by and the armed satellite hanging in the low earth orbit was like the sword of Damocles, making all human countries tremble with fear. At SHIELD, the fourth attack predicted by the White Eagle Federation military was about to launch again, and when New York was about to fall, when the pointer passed the last second, the attack did not arrive as expected. According to part of the information given by SHIELD, the JTF Joint Combat Force realized that every time the armed satellite of the 935 group in low earth orbit was going to attack, it would have at least eight hours of cooling time to recharge it. Shortly after the third attack, a few hours ago, the Foundation suddenly announced that it would intervene with full force. The JTF troops who were still fighting fiercely at that time, as well as the people trapped in the urban area, felt that the incident was about to usher in a dawn and a reversal. It's just that the time after that was almost like a year, and I didn't see the Foundation's next move. However, endless mutated creatures formed waves of offensives and began to attack the New York defense line. New York City which was already in jeopardy due to the blockade across the country, is even more shaky this time. It's just that when countless fearful people are fearing that the apocalypse is approaching, the fourth doomsday weapon will turn New York into the largest biochemical brood of the White Eagle Federation. Nothing happened, and the eighth hour passed quietly. In the low Earth orbit, 8HO-229 tactical meshes have controlled the satellite, and the white-painted mecha at the moment silently sent a radio signal to the fleet docked in the distant low Earth orbit. Here, Captain 2B of the Aurora Assault Force has seized control of the target. Number 1D, 11E, you will capture the target and bring it back to the fleet, and the rest of you will go directly into the atmosphere with me. On the punishment, after finally receiving the news that Miss 2B's operation was successful, the orbital assault operation was finally launched. Attention all units, attention all units, the operation begins, and the orbital airdrop will be carried out in five minutes. In the hangar of the punishment aerospace aircraft carrier, one after another Jackal Aerospace fighters that have been prepared slowly moved to the ejection port. Tower, 
Tower. This is the Jekyll Squadron. The fighter jets are ready to take off. The tower received it. The airspace is good. You can take off. Accompanied by the activation of the catapult, one Jackal fighter after another ejected from the flight runway of the Retribution, and flew towards the atmosphere of the Blue Star. Among the punishment, a regiment level Hell Paratrooper MTF Mobile Task Force and a regiment level 9 tailed Fox MTF Mobile Task Force have already assembled in front of the orbital airdrop cabin. These two MTF Mobile Task Forces that are airdropping are elite MTF troops. They are all equipped with MTFI mobile exoskeletons, accompanying stealth meshes and various accompanying unmanned vehicles. They are also equipped with Orbital. The communication system can call the support of the Orbital fleet at any time. These troops at the moment are taking companies as units, ready to go one by one, and the queues are like standard tofu blocks, staying in front of their respective Orbital airdrop cabins. In front of the airdrop cabin, the siren sounded, and with the green action signal lights on, all troops immediately entered their respective Orbital assault cabins. Three Imperium of Man Indomitable class light cruisers of the 40k universe at the moment have adjusted their guns. The artillery is ready to clear the landing area. Immediately, hundreds of dazzling flames appeared on the three battleships. These hundreds of fireball-like cannonballs were like comets, piercing the sky and falling to the ground. Every ten seconds or so, there will be a new round of bombardment of the tube class light cruiser, which will constantly pour down on the ground with intensive orbital firepower. The two Gloria airspace assault motherships began to break into the atmosphere. These two ships are specialized ground suppression motherships. Although they cannot carry out orbital bombardment, they have super ground suppression ability. The main force providing supporting firepower. When the two Gloria ground suppressing motherships broke into the atmosphere, in the low Earth orbit fleet, countless Foundation troops armed to the teeth, as well as all the combatants on the Silent Creature Legion, had already entered the completely enclosed orbital airborne cabin. At the moment Chen Feng's voice sounded on the public channel. I am honored to be able to carry out this unprecedented airborne operation with so many warriors. This time we're going to blast from orbit and come back like a comet. The out of control of the abnormal containment object 008 has created a large number of aliens, polluted our land, and threatened the safety of all human beings. Zero. As a member of the Foundation, I will never sit idly by and allow these aliens to run amok on our planet. I will, as a member of you participate in orbital airborne operations ready to save the world we control we contain until we die in the countless airdrop cabins there were cheers from the soldiers we control we contain until death huger human hail to die generously is now the action begins with an order countless orbital airdrop pods were rejected at this moment looking from space an incomparably spectacular scene appeared in the eyes of the battleship crew dot 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 zero accompanied by the orbital bombardment like pyrotechnics Countless orbital airdrop pods fell rapidly. Soon these airdrop pods were pulled by the gravity near the ground, broke through the atmosphere, and fell into the world like meteor showers one after another. In New York City in the midst of winter, the UTF soldiers who had been fighting for a day were helpless and exhausted. Countless agents across the territory who fought bravely were exhausted from the endless battles. At this moment, a UTF soldier who was resting widened his eyes and watched meteors appearing in the sky one after another. How can there be shooting stars at this time? This number dot 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 is a bit wrong. Seeing this scene, he suddenly thought of something. Not long ago, there was news from the JTF Combat Command that a support force would arrive by airborne. At this moment, the rail bombardment arrived as expected and the tide-like corpses in the army suddenly seemed to be smashed into a calm lake by a stone. Huge amounts of explosions sent countless zombies and mutated creatures flying, accompanied by terrifying shockwaves and heat waves, almost wiped out hundreds of square meters. Then, the second, the third, countless light spots fell into the tide of corpses. The originally precarious line of defense was instantly stabilized. Our reinforcements have come down from the sky. Chapter 89 Orbital Airborne World War Legion Questionable Creature Corps Accompanied by orbital bombardment that rumbled like divine punishment, the mutated creatures and zombies that were still as dense as the tide were swept away, leaving only huge amounts of bomb craters, scorched black and red land, and coke-like stumps, arms and pieces of meat. At the moment, countless orbital airborne capsules that are as dense as a meteor shower fall, just like the MTF Mobile Task Force of the Foundation, like a god descending from the Earth. Under the cover of KF-60 main battle tanks, AMF-7 infantry combat vehicles, and Hunt anti-mine ambush vehicles, these well-trained elite task force members wearing MTFI tactical exoskeletons, blazed out of the orbital airborne cabin with powerful the firepower cleared up the surrounding corpses in an instant. The JTF soldiers guarding the New York defense line watched all this happen with dumbstruck, followed by huge amounts of cheers, and immediately cooperated with these elite orbital commandos to fight. 
However, 857 is only a small part of the defense line. This is because the MTF task force airborne from the upper orbit of the retribution is only more than 2,000 people. These more than 2,000 people are scattered on this huge amounts of battlefield, but they are only deployed in a small area. More UTF troops, agents throughout the territory, SHIELD troops, as well as those New York citizens and survivors of the infected area, saw an extremely strange scene in their eyes. When a large number of orbital airborne capsules fell, they landed in areas where no orbital bombardment occurred at all. Those small orbital airborne pods weighing more than one ton, and even the orbital airborne pods of the airdrop vehicles weighing tens of tons directly hit the troops of the black and ten-piece alien creatures. With the opening of the orbital hatch, they saw such a weird orbital paratrooper. The painting style of these orbital paratroopers is completely different from those of the MTF Mobile Task Force. This is wearing a plastic steel helmet that resembles the Prussian style of World War II, and a gas mask is worn under the helmet. These soldiers were wearing grey and heavy military coats, and a plastic steel shoulder armor was also tightly fastened on the military coats, and underneath were also heavy and thick trousers, leggings, and thick military boots. The firearms in the hands of these soldiers are rougher and larger than those of normal modern troops, and they are equipped with 45 cm heavy sort of bayonets. The painting style of this unit is very strange, and even makes people doubt their combat effectiveness. Jesus, what's going on with these guys? Why did the reinforcements we dropped from the air turn out to be a group of antiques from World War II? Wardfer, are these guys really capable of fighting? Orbital air dropped such a troop? My god, they just hit in front of the corpse tide? It's over. Can we get new reinforcements? I bet 50 cents skies. They'll be overwhelmed by those monsters in five minutes. Maybe rail bombardment backs us up? That's crazy. Is this force really capable? None of the blue stars in the American comics world recognize this legion. What they don't know is that the heavy Krager overcoat is extremely warm and waterproof, and it can also provide effective protection against biological and chemical gases. Plastic steel helmets have a ventilation and filtration system, and when paired with a gas mask, they can filter harmful chemical and viral pollution. That clumsy and stupid-looking weapon is the famous Lucius N.98 laser gun. The equipment on these troops is actually beyond the imagination of the regular Blue Star troops. This is a training team that looks like the style of World War II, but the actual equipment and combat level are the advanced combat power of the interstellar era. Their seemingly primitive equipment is not as backward as it seems. On the contrary, its advanced level far exceeds the understanding of Terra Blue Stars in this era. Although it is said that when the Krager Legion first arrived, they were only greeted with voices of doubt. Even these radios have abused the command headquarters of JTF, whether it is SHIELD, or Hydra, or the top leaders of various countries are dumbfounded. Originally because of the powerful aerospace fleet in low Earth orbit, the undoubted hard power of orbital airborne, and the admiration brought about by powerful orbital bombardment, deep doubts arose at this moment. Is this army really their savior? Accompanied by such doubts, just when some other forces are already planning to watch the Foundation have fun. It took only a few minutes for the Airborne Creature Corps to prove their combat effectiveness. The moment the orbital airborne hatch opened, it hit the center of the wave of corpses, and even the Creature soldiers near the wave of corpses had already raised their Lucius laser guns. Thick serrated bayonets and engineer shovels directly pierce or chop the delicious zombies and hunters into rotten meat. Although each rechargeable battery carried by the loyal Lucius N.98 rifle can only fire 25 lasers, it needs to be replaced frequently and the longer charging time affects the firing rate of the laser gun. But each shot is equivalent to the power of a 12.7 large caliber firearm, which is enough to make up for this shortcoming. Every soldier of the Krager Legion is an expert in stabbing and melee combat. With their skilled melee fighting ability, they wiped out the corpses and mutated creatures near the airborne cabin like cutting melons and vegetables. They immediately formed a battle formation, with 10 people each forming a standard Krager infantry squad. Under the leadership of a captain veteran, they immediately organized and exerted the effectiveness of their weapons, sweeping away the mutated creatures and corpses around them. After seeing the performance of the Creature Legion, countless voices of doubt disappeared. All the JTF troops stared blankly at this terrifying army assembled like a precision machine. Is this the strength of the orbital airborne force? How did the Foundation train such a monstrous army? After cleaning up the surrounding corpses and biochemical monsters, the airborne creature troops immediately began to gather, like a battle axe to slash at the corpses, splitting their first attacks invincibly. The organized Krager troops formed a standard Krager straggler line, silently facing the parasitic infected Black Watch who came after 0.2 of the corpse tide, or the parasitic soldier army composed of various human troops. There is also the endless army of flesh and blood machines that JTF regards as a nightmare, made of flesh and blood mixed with the crystallization of Stark industry. A fierce battle is about to break out. 100,000 Krager soldiers, as well as other MTF task forces airborne from orbit, 
will face tens of millions of enemies, as well as the sea monsters that are still being produced continuously. Biochemical Hole. This is a battle that even powerful forces like SHIE, LD and Hydra feel deeply hopeless. And this will also be the first battle of the Crater Death Core after it descends on Terra Blue Star, and it will also be a battle that will shock the world. A battle between the dead against the dead is about to break out, and the tragic duel will start at the next moment. Chapter 90 The Weird Crater Legion Phil Coulson's shocking conjecture. If there is any cosmic world that is more dangerous and cruel than the Marvel world, the world of Warhammer 40k is one of them. There is a time travel meme about the world of Warhammer 40k that has been circulating. Even people who like Warhammer 40k will cry like a fart after traveling to the world of Warhammer 40k. It is a gift to enjoy quiet death. If one is unlucky, the soul will be polluted by the four evil gods of the subspace after death, and the soul will be tortured and played with forever. In the world of the 40k universe, Human beings are threatened all the time. The human empire is fighting with chaos, orcs, elder, necrons, tyranids, and other alien races that threaten huge amounts of every second. The influence of the evil god chaos exists all the time, bewitching and luring human beings to degenerate, and every time they create a tragic erosion that will be destroyed because of the world. The Creeks came from such a plain universe. There is a proverb in the world of Warhammer 40,000. People often say that the lives of human soldiers are the currency in the hands of the Emperor, and if Crater soldiers are the currency in the hands of the Emperor, they must be the kind that are tightly wrapped with countless coins, rubbed into balls and smashed at the enemy. The home planet of the Craters, Planet Crater, once experienced a large-scale rebellion. In the end, the commander of the loyal faction believed that the planet Crater could only be controlled by the human empire loyal to the Emperor. If the Emperor if the Emperor loses her, then no one will be able to get her. The final solution is that the nuclear explosion baptized the entire Crater Star, and the nuclear winter and the spread of radiation dust made the living environment of the Crater Star cruel and harsh. However, the war is not over yet. On Crater's home planet, which is covered with countless trenches, tunnels, and barbed wire fences, the Crater Loyal Faction and the Rebel Faction are fighting more fiercely in every trench and every tunnel. In the underground tunnels that Crater has long been so complicated that no one can understand. The Crater troops use shotguns, Hell 09 fire spray guns, grenades and engineer shovels to clear the tunnels one by one. The cleanup will require extremely tragic sacrifices. In such a situation where each front was more tragic than the Battle of Stalingrad, the war lasted for 500 years before the home planet of Crater finally returned to the human empire. The war that lasted for 500 years is enough to change too much, which also resulted in the unique values and culture of the Kriegs in the eyes of the commanders of the Crater army. As long as it is necessary for the great cause of the human emperor, no matter how many casualties the army should pay, this worship of the spirit of sacrifice is deeply imprinted in the death of Krager. Legion's strategic doctrine and troop formation. For every soldier of the Krieg Death Legion, the meaning of their existence is to fight non-stop, and sacrifice for the human emperor generation after generation, until today they still firmly implement this ultimate goal with practical actions. It is precisely because of such death as the ultimate goal that Commander Krieger has a unique tactical cognition. The commanders of Krieger believe that victory in war comes from the ruthless crushing of superior forces. Their theories tend to be attrition wars, and they are willing to fight for victory at a cost far exceeding the enemy's on any battlefield. The key is nothing but time and personnel consumption. In order to ensure that every soldier can become an unswerving victim of the Emperor, the Kriegs have been instilled with state religion beliefs and military education since they were very young and integrated military traditions and sacrifice spirits into the social culture of Krieg's middle. This makes Krieger soldiers famous for never backing down, because of their past history, all Krieger soldiers regard their own death as a deserved punishment, and atone for the heretical past history of their planet. In the end, this monster-like army was created. The Krieger army is not afraid of death, and even proud of death. The powerful trench warfare and siege skills honed in 500 years of tunnel and trench warfare are extremely good at using firepower to prepare strike even dare the infantry to assist the ultimate death charge. And every Krager soldier is undoubtedly an extremely good soldier. They have extremely skilled fighting skills. Due to the atonement culture, every year when Krager's home planet contributes a tithe to the human empire, it will hand in the maximum amount, at least dozens of regiments of Krager troops. Just looking at the dozens of regiments, you might think they are small, but the regiment level organization of the human empire in the Warhammer world is extremely chaotic. If you look at the number of people, it is 500 million people and 500 million people every year. The selection of these 500 million people still has to go through a final ceremony, that is, a confrontation between the two Krager legions, and the victor can enter the battle sequence of the human empire. The losers who did not pass the final ceremony will naturally usher in the end in advance, that is to say, only after 1 billion people have been screened can the seeds of 500 million tithes be handed over. But also because of the extremely unique culture of sacrifice, in the end, 
The normal human astral army troops are generally not very willing to mix with the Kriegs, and even the morale of their own troops will be low when they are near them. These Kriegs always wear that iconic gas mask and are so taciturn that they don't even use their own names, but use numbers all the time, like a living dead man. But despite this, no matter who is willing to entrust their backs to such a force, no matter how difficult and difficult the task is, as long as it is entrusted to them, the Kriegs can guarantee that they will definitely fight to the last soldier. Pawn. As a commander, such a troop can't wait for the more the better. Chen Feng's only worry is that Grieger's commander is too active in combat, and if the troops are exhausted too quickly, he will have a headache instead. After the orbital airborne, after clearing the surrounding corpses and various mutated creatures, the Krieger Corps immediately began to build a defensive position according to the battle plan drawn up by Chen Feng. In less than an hour, those skilled Krieger engineers built a large defensive position on the plane consisting of trenches, sandbags, barbed wire, and anti-tank repellent horses. While the Krieger Legion was deploying, observers like SHIELD, JTF, and various forces, agents, were secretly observing their every move. In the eyes of Blue Star's military experts, this army is simply extremely weird, not to mention those soldiers who seem to be dressed in the style of World War I or World War II, and those extremely rough weapons. The weapons and equipment used by the Krieger Legion are all from people in the 40k world star militia. While various spies, observers saw the Krieger Corps unfurling ground shakers like toad field guns, and Medusa siege guns like super giant mortars. There are also those extremely rough sights like the water tanks of World War I or the French R-44 of World War II, when Lehman Lux tanks with even rivet structures are used, and those Centaur multifunction transport vehicles. The three views of these spies and observers have almost been reshaped, because the weapons used by the Krieger Legion seem to have come out of World War I and World War II. Their weapons and equipment, in the eyes of the modern army, are simply unsystematic. If you use the Federal Army of the same strength to fight them, maybe you can still gain a crushing advantage in the battle. After all, the perfect system and advanced equipment of the Federal Army might defeat these weird Foundation troops, even though they thought so. The Krieger Legion, which had seen the orbital drop before, easily wiped out the corpse tide by relying on its powerful individual ability. And their rough individual weapons turned out to be high-energy laser guns that can't be manufactured in modern times. These spy agents and military observers dare not make a conclusion. The military spies looked at those ground-shaking cannons, as well as the main guns of the Lehman Ruth tanks, and even those exaggerated muzzles and their scalps were a little numb. In any case, at least for the caliber of the equipment, its firepower should be quite formidable. Judging by the file size and caliber of those ground-shaking cannons, they are at least 200mm caliber field cannons, which are much larger than the 155mm caliber field cannons of modern conventional artillery. The exaggerated caliber of the Medusa siege cannon is at least 600mm. The Lehman Rustank, a military horse from the human empire, has a very rough shape. The cannon on the main turret is at least a 160 mm caliber gun. The rough hull of the Lehman Rustan tank, which should be eliminated in the eyes of observers, is also equipped with a suspected 120 mm caliber gun. And the observation port, and the top of the main turret are also equipped with two machine gun weapons with a caliber of at least 20 mm. Here, I would like to explain to readers who are more familiar with the world of war armor that GW officials are very careless in military affairs and have even given up treatment. I can only modify part of the data in a way that I think is reasonable. In the eyes of knowledgeable people, this army feels extremely weird. It seems that they are constantly pursuing extremely powerful firepower, as if the enemies these people often face are not normal human troops. If Chen Feng knew their judgment, he might laugh PSST out loud. These people really guessed right. Although in the human empire in the Warhammer 40k world, the astral forces are reduced to background boards and cannon fodder characters no matter in various GW official novel materials or works. However, the human empire also relied on the hard-to-count number of Star Realm troops in order to maintain the empire's territory. At the moment, the Krieger Legion has already laid out the defense line. It has to be said that these Krieger Legion set up the defense line very quickly. They have set up such a complete trench system in such a short period of time. Even if it is a modern engineering unit to arrange such fortifications, it will take several times more time than this. At this time, the scalps of the knowledgeable military observers were a little numb. They discovered that those creature soldiers were able to dig out the ground with their engineering shovels so quickly in the hard ground of New York State that had already snowed. Various foxholes and bunkers. Even modern elite soldiers need more time than them to dig out such fortifications with engineering shovels in this weather. Among the defense lines of JTF, Phil Coulson put down his binoculars and shook off the snowflakes on his shoulders, with a weird and surprised look on his face. Phil Coulson and his team received orders from Nick Fury to collect intelligence and observe the Krieger Corps after the Foundation launched orbital descent operations. The 100,000 Krieger Legion was divided into three parts, 
resisting the necessary places on the road between the three alien biochemical layers and New York. Due to the lack of understanding of these creature troops and the lack of communication for the time being, the surrounding JTF troops did not contact them rashly. The positions of these creature regiments were actually placed directly in front of the JTF defense line, which made the JTF soldiers feel very complicated. They were a little annoyed that they looked down on JTF's combat effectiveness, and 660 was moved by their fact that they could fight with such a small force. Dare to arrange the defense line to the front of the JTF troops. Seeing Phil Coulson put down the binoculars, Agent masked, Phil Coulson, have you seen anything? Cole, Sen frowned, and said, it feels like a weird army. Their equipment looks backward, but it is actually very advanced, and the physical fitness and physical quality of those soldiers are far beyond modern times. Human beings, even ordinary soldiers, are physically as strong as our most elite special forces, or even stronger. It took less than an hour for this group of people to dug out such a fortification at a temperature of around minus eight. I almost suspected that these soldiers were mutant soldiers. Zero. Hearing what Phil Coulson said, May's agent joked, they are all wearing gas masks, maybe they are really mutants when they take off the gas masks. According to the judgment of the reconnaissance plane, how long will it take for those alienated infected troops to arrive? Their positions? About 20 minutes. What the hell? There are at least five National Guard infantry divisions and 50,000 Blackwatch troops infected, plus all kinds of armed people who can use weapons, and people who are infected. Alienated infected TF. The next thing they have to face is at least 300,000 modern troops infected by alienation, and an unknown number of alienated mecha troops. May, do you think they can hold it? I'm a bit suspicious. After all, the JTF was defeated not long ago, causing large numbers of troops to be infected and alienated. Their rail bombardment also stopped and the outcome is hard to tell. At this time, Phil Coulson exhaled, calmly stated a shocking conjecture and judgment he just got in his heart. I said, what if this army dot 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 are they created by the Foundation specifically to deal with aliens or aliens? W-H-Y? Phil Coulson, are you serious? I'm serious, May. Is it possible that this army was not born to fight normal wars? Or is it possible that the Foundation is somewhere we don't know dot 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 and there are countless such troops dot 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 they may, um, be engaged in a war involving human beings? A war of survival? This is insane, Phil Coulson. Phil Coulson took a long breath, I hope it's my crazy guess, but I still plan to write this report to Director Nick truthfully. As he spoke, Phil Coulson signed his name on his observation report. After closing the report, Phil Coulson said calmly, I have a hunch that this battle will shock the world. Chapter 91 Global Focus, Krager's First Battle After the orbital airborne, the UTF line of defense around New York was stabilized and cleared. As a result of Obadiah's attack, Three satellite cities in New York State were destroyed. It miraculously caused chaos in New York City due to the blockade of the entire territory, and even used two waves of agents throughout the territory to stabilize the city that was not completely stabilized. Except for a very small number of gang members who have become crazy and anti-human and anti-social thugs, most people even actively cooperate with the work of JTF. Between the possibility of going to heaven and the certainty of going to heaven, the rebellious New York heroes still choose the former from the heart. After all, JTF controls the city, at most it is possible to start an American-style cohabitation with you, if it is replaced by those mutated biochemical monsters. They will only treat you kindly. After stabilizing the JTF in the rear, at the moment was able to regroup, and with the assistance of Foundation troops and agents across the territory, began to stabilize Jefferson's line of defense. This is the name of the JTF Joint Operations Command for the New York Line of Defense. They hope that the Jefferson Line of Defense in New York can save the Union like the famous general in the War of Independence. As we all know, the Commonwealth is actually a country of free faith, especially after the blockade event, and yesterday, the Apocalypse Day event in which three cities were destroyed in the mainland. Coupled with the exposure of abnormal containment objects and various chaotic folk speeches, people are extremely looking forward to the arrival of a savior. When the Foundation's troops landed from the orbit to the surrounding area, it seemed to be fatalistic. The entire Federation placed all hopes and expectations of the Savior on the Foundations. Just under the terrible heat, coupled with the solidity of Jefferson's defense line, TV stations and media from all over the United States began live broadcasts of the battlefield. Numerous experienced war reporters are hiding in the relatively solid UTF Jefferson line of defense, live broadcasting the battle of the Foundation troops around the world. Coupled with the promotion of some forces with ulterior motives, I hope to see the Foundation make a fool of themselves on the battlefield, especially the outdated equipment of the Krager army that looks like the style of World War I and World War II. The live broadcast of this battlefield was even more fueled. The first battle of the Krager troops was therefore exposed to the eyes of the people all over the world. This also caused the helicopters of the TV station to fly behind the relatively safe line of defense, and there were various live broadcast and photography vehicles filming the exceptionally quiet position of the Krager Corps. 
Compared with the bustle of Jefferson's defense line, the Krieger Army's defense line covered with trenches and barbed wire, the Krieger Army's position can be described as silent. Especially in a location with an excellent camera position, you can clearly see the Krieger soldiers standing guard like sculptures in a trench in the Krieger position. Feather like snowflakes are falling, and today's weather is not good. It didn't take long for the excavated Krieger position to be covered with white snow. However, those Krieger soldiers standing like sculptures stood still, even if their calves had been covered by the white snow. This scene directly moved people, whether it was those hypocritical white leftists, or the MAGA that had surged due to various disasters, or all kinds of immigrants who were crying for their parents to come in. But now they are cursing their mothers because they are in danger. When they saw these creature soldiers who looked like statues, countless federal people burst into tears. They seem to have seen World War II, the peak period of the White Eagle Federation where the just battle was going on, and only the federal soldiers at that time had such a mental outlook and were so steadfast. On JTF's defense line, when various media, even self-media, made a mess, it did not prevent the army of infected people pouring in like a tide, and gradually approached the defense line of the Krieger army. JTF's artillery has already started covering strikes with artillery, but the effect is not good. The parasitic army refers to the modern army that is infected and parasitic. These troops and those high-level special mutant monsters are the real main force of biochemical aliens. However, even for the modern army, it is not easy to accurately strike these targets, because these parasitic armies are very smart, and they will always hide in the mighty tide of corpses and mutated creatures. When massive cannon fodder like corpses and mutated creatures flood in, they will always consume a large amount of artillery fire and ammunition of the human troops, causing the elites and the main forces of the enemy to be directly overwhelmed by such mixed biochemical and alien troops. Route. And aside from those cannon fodder like zombies, among the biochemical aliens, there are many high level special infected people. For example, a tall man who can spit out a large amount of viruses and corrosive acid, is extremely mobile after alienation. Hunters appear in groups a howling banshee who emits sonic attacks, and a witch with terrifying strength and inhuman speed, perform optical invisibility, lurk monsters with alienated blades, alien titans as high as 4 or 5 meters, or even 7 or 8 meters. Not counting those parasitic armies whose vitality far exceeds that of ordinary people after being infected with parasites, and which can normally display human weapons and equipment. Once the defense line of the human army is defeated, basically without exception, they will be parasitized, and then they will continue to attack the human army in turn. What's more, there are flesh and blood mesh units controlled by Obadiah that use Stark industry and alienated flesh and blood, which makes JTF miserable. And at the moment, such a wave of terror was about to crash into the defenses of the Creature Legion. In the first wave, there was a wave of corpses on the scale of at least one million, and a large number of parasitic troops were among them. Even Phil Coulson, who was watching with a telescope a few kilometers away, was sweating in such a cold day. The focus of countless people's eyes is at this moment, and the army of death is about to hit the wave-like army of biochemical aliens. Finally, the defense line of the Creature Legion moved, and those 210 mm caliber ground-shaking cannons burst into roars after adjusting their shooting elements. Under the incredible eyes of Phil Coulson, he clearly saw the bombing effect captured by the reconnaissance drone on the original Snow White plane. There were only 36 scorched and steaming, covered with bullet craters of broken corpses of infected people. In the artillery positions of the Creature Army he observed, the 12 ground shaking cannons fired only 3 volleys, and the 210 mm caliber artillery fired 36 shells, which actually exploded 36 shells with an average diameter of a huge crater more than 10 meters wide. Just looking at the crater, this must be at least a 1,000 pound aerial bomb or a 460 mm naval gun to achieve the effect. The power of this charge is far stronger than modern artillery, and it is so accurate that it looks like a precision guided weapon. How did they do it? Phil Coulson at the moment was the only thought left in Phil Coulson's mind. Just one round of shelling destroyed an area the size of at least seven or eight football fields. Under such firepower, at least two to three thousand corpses of infected people were directly blown to pieces under the terrible shelling. Even if it wasn't fried to pieces, it was shaken to pieces by shockwave. Sure enough, these foundation troops are not as simple as they seem. However, at this time, the artillery counterattack of the parasitic army also came. The shells of the 155mm artillery accurately landed on the position of the Creature Legion. The soldiers have skillfully hid in the cat's ear holes in the trenches to avoid the shelling. Those extremely well-drilled fortifications can be seen to have effectively offset the power of the artillery. Coupled with the snow and the solid ground, this round of shelling did not cause much effect. Creature's soldiers returned to their combat positions almost immediately when the shelling ended. At this time, the artillery observers of the veteran Creature Legion had already detected the position of the opponent's artillery and immediately called for artillery fire to counterattack, and the ground-shaking artillery fired again to destroy the artillery team of the Parasite Army. Then the dense artillery sounded, 
and began to conduct intensive and precise bombardment on the waves of infected people who launched the impact. These ground-shaking cannons from the Warama 40K World Mailer Craft, where the technological level and the materials contained in them are indeed extremely high. Not only the rate of fire is much higher than that of ordinary field guns, but also the shelling is extremely accurate and the shells are extremely powerful. Under the bombardment of a firepower density stronger than that of the modern human army, it is actually rare that the first wave of hundreds of thousands of infected people was submerged in the terrible firepower. But at this time, the ground shaking cannon also consumed a large amount of shells, and the barrel of the gun had already heated up, so it stopped temporarily. At this time, a war reporter recorded such a scene in the trench where the bullets were raining. A bullet accurately hit the head of a courageous soldier, and his body shook under the impact. However, the bullet did not penetrate such a soldier's helmet, New Orleans, but what is surprising is that he just swayed and continued to stand there, motionless. At this time, the Creature Legion's position finally opened fire, and laser beams accompanied by live ammunition quickly and accurately eliminated the infected who rushed towards the position. The main gun of the Lehmannrist tank and the laser cannon on the body, as well as the hot melt guns on the roof and body are fired, directly melting all the enemies in front of the position into pulp. At this moment, the Medusa siege cannon deployed on the artillery position sounded, accompanied by the attack of the ground shaking cannon. The screaming 600mm Medusa siege cannon, together with the shells of the ground shaking cannon, rained down on the wave of parasitic troops in front of the position. Accompanied by a series of deafening explosions, smoke and heat filled the front of the position, making the battlefield that was still extremely lively just now instantly quiet down. In this silent time, beep, 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 a charge whistle sounded, under countless shots, I saw that steel-like figure leaping out of the trench in an instant with incomparable vigor. For a while, countless people couldn't figure out who was Lang Zhao. Inside the gas masks, there were pairs of firm eyes, shiny serrated bayonets and engineer shovels, amidst the overwhelming footsteps, smashed hard at the heads of those infected who thought they could enjoy their flesh and blood. Chapter 92 The Battle of the Dead Against the Dead, Krager's Death Charge Along the defense line of the Krager Legion arranged along the highway, on the snow-covered plain, one after another scorched craters were blasted by the artillery. Scattered mist. Under the white smoke that permeated the battlefield, following the charge whistle one after another, one after another, the vigorous figures in gray military coats launched a fearless charge with a sound of rumbling guns. This is courage beyond the imagination of the world. Even if the soldiers of JTF encountered such a terrifying wave of offensive, they still chose to stay in solid positions and fortifications, relying on powerful modern firepower to continuously consume the enemy. Instead of using this 100,000 troops to attack the vast and endless army of nearly 10 million infected people, this requires not only strength, but also enough courage. One after another, courageous soldiers stepped on the barrage of the earth-shaking cannon, and in the smog filled the sky, like ghosts returning from hell, they ran head-on at the parasitic army and all kinds of soldiers who had been bombarded to pieces. Biochemical alien The war reporters who recorded the entire battlefield on Jefferson's defense line were almost dumbfounded. The soldiers of the Krieg Death Army kept silent when charging, and they didn't care about the casualties of the troops at all, as if the hail of bullets fired by the parasitic army on the opposite side did not exist. Even if they were hit by bullets, or even hit by the opponent's sporadic shelling, or severely injured by the barrage, they would not yell or howl. It seems that they don't care about their own injuries, they are just robots who want to complete the combat mission, but the blood flowing from their wounds shows that they are all human beings. After being deeply injured and thinking that they could no longer complete the task, these fearless courageous soldiers directly fired the grenade bombs or explosives on their bodies, and rushed to the enemies around them to open the passage for their teammates. This crazy and fearless style of play shocked the war reporters who were recording all this with a video camera, and it also shocked every audience who watched the live broadcast of the battlefield in front of the screen. But seeing this scene, those excellent generals on Terra Blue Star 477 frowned and cursed. Who is commanding such a battle? They actually use such excellent soldiers to initiate such an unnecessary consumption. Even if they have an advantage in equipment, normally they should huddle in the position to stagnate and consume the enemy. Such a wave of numbers cannot be contained even with the use of nuclear weapons, not to mention that there are still a large number of parasitic troops. If this army is exhausted, won't it be parasitized by the enemy and rise up again to fight against human beings? However, these generals and the military observers found that their judgment was wrong. The charge of Krager's death army was not blocked by the tide. Instead, as they charged, the shelling of the ground-shaking cannons became more and more accurate, and accompanied by the shelling of the Medusa siege cannons that bombarded from time to time, always able to accurately eliminate the parasite army hidden in the corpse tide. Phil Coulson, who was conducting observations, even discovered that the laser weapons used by the Krager death army almost had a miraculous effect on those zombies and mutant creatures. Using conventional gunpowder weapons to deal with the zombies, 
If it doesn't hit vital points such as the brain, it is often possible for ordinary soldiers to kill two to three zombies after finishing one magazine. It will be even more difficult if you encounter those parasite troops. Maybe you will die instead of the other side after you finish firing a magazine. Because the parasite army, especially the parasite army of Blackwatch, they all wear heavy armor, but the standard NATO weapons used by JTF mostly use 5.56 45mm M855A1 bullets. It is almost impossible for such a bullet to kill a parasite army that has been infected by the parasite at a distance of 200 meters. These parasite soldiers not only wear the same level of body armor, but their physique is also strengthened by parasites. Even after their original heads are blown off, they can use parasites to replace the functions of their brains. Unless large caliber weapons are used, it is extremely difficult to kill them, which is why a large number of, ag, soldiers of the White Eagle Federation Army were defeated by them and then infected with parasitism. However, when the Crater Legion encountered these parasite armies, the situation was completely different. If laser weapons are used, the ammunition of an energy battery can kill at least 10 zombies or mutant creatures. Even if it is a parasite army, the heavy body armor and bulletproof plates on their bodies can withstand one or two more shots. Will be broken down. On the other hand, the weapons used by the parasitic soldiers could not effectively penetrate the plastic steel armor on the Kriag soldiers, and the scene was reversed all of a sudden. At this time, some armored vehicles, tanks and other equipment that looked abnormally distorted appeared in the parasite army. After the parasitic M182 Abrams main battle tanks and M2 Bradley infantry vehicles appeared, they immediately poured firepower at the charging Krieger Death Legion soldiers. At this time, the Lemonrus tanks that accompanied the Krieg soldiers charged began to fire on the parasitic armor. Skilled crews of Krieger's experienced Lemonrus tanks fought back after being attacked. The performance of the Lehman Lux tank, which has always been regarded as an antique, has exceeded the expectations of almost all military observers, as well as the audience watching the live broadcast of the battlefield. Those Lehman Lux tanks that moved a little slowly, making people think they were old antiques, or even World War I equipment, were hit by at least six rounds of M1A2 Abrams 120mm tank shells in the first place. Surprisingly, the APDS, armor-piercing stabilized fin, did not penetrate these antique armors. After the APDS hit these Lehman Russ tanks, only a shallow trace was left, and then Lehman Russ main gun and the melter cannon mounted on the car body fired. After the 180mm cannon of the Lehman Ruth tank hit a parasitic M1A2 Abrams tank, the armor-piercing projectile with terrifying kinetic energy penetrated its armor, and the explosives inside caused a terrible explosion. Directly even the parasitic M182 tank was blown into two sections and caused the explosion of its internal ammunition. And the melter cannon on its car body also fired and a dark red light exuding hot and high temperature directly hit another parasitic M182 main battle tank. The terrifying high temperature directly melted the armor alloy of M1A2 into carbon slag. The entire body of the car was pierced by the melter gun, and the parasites inside were directly roasted and completely gasified. Phil Coulson, who watched the horrific lethality of the Lehman Rust tank, was dumbfounded. I thought it was an old-fashioned antique, but it turned out that this thing looks like an old antique but the actual weaponry and equipment technology content is far beyond the modern age. At the same time, the vehicle-mounted heavy machine guns on the roof and body of the Lehman Lust tank were also constantly pouring firepower at the parasite soldiers, especially the double-linked stump guns on the roof. When parasitizing soldiers, even if it is just brushed away, it will be broken into two pieces. Under the heroic assault of the soldiers of Krieger's death army, the army of parasites who were the wave of corpses were directly beaten head-on. However, the disadvantage of Krager's death corps is that there are relatively few mechanization, most of them are infantry, and the amount of armor is still too small compared to the opponent. The keen Phil Coulson immediately discovered this, and when Phil Coulson thought that the infantry units of the Krager death army were about to be slaughtered by the opponent's mechanized troops, a surprising scene appeared. Facing the parasitic heavy armor, the anti-tank team of Krager's death corps immediately appeared, and they used individual melter guns to attack the parasitic M182 main battle tank. And when these parasitic heavy armors appeared, Krager soldiers would also use their laser guns to focus fire. Unexpectedly, the high density attack of laser guns and melter guns would directly harden the armor of the parasitic M182 main battle tanks. It melted alive. Some brave Kriag soldiers even charged directly, using melter bombs to blow up the heavy vehicles in the parasite army. The parasitic ghouls, which are the command nodes of the parasite army, created confusion, and they couldn't help being stunned after absorbing a lot of human command knowledge. The tried and tested tactic before was to use a large number of zombies and mutated creatures to consume human firepower and ammunition, then use the parasite army to defeat the opponent, and then convert those human troops into one of their own. This tactic has been tried and tested, and in the battles of the previous days, the army of these parasites has also grown constantly. Why did such a one-trick tactic suddenly fail? Natasha Romanoff 
who has been following the battle, Phil Corson as an observer, and the outstanding officers of the human side have seen a lot of tricks. Krager's Death Army's counterattack can defeat the Parasite Army, not only relying on weapon superiority. Even with the same equipment for the JTF, it is difficult for the soldiers of the White Eagle Federation to have the terrifying and constant morale of the Krager Death Army. Once the attack is frustrated or suffers casualties, the soldiers will be afraid. If the casualties continue to rise, they may collapse. What's more, let them attack such a terrifying number of corpses. When Krieger's soldiers launched a charge, many observers found that a large number of parasite troops were hit by ruthless artillery fire from Krieger's death corps. Under the terrible firepower, those parasite troops immediately caused a large number of casualties. It is obvious that the Krieger troops are attacking and charging to find out those important enemy targets and call for firepower to completely destroy them. Although the tide of biochemical corpses is still flowing, but with the destruction of the Parasite Army, the battle line unexpectedly began to move towards the infected area, towards the direction of the three biochemical broods. A counterattack destroyed at least more than 100,000 Parasite troops, and there were 300,000 to 400,000 household tides. The Parasitic Army and the constant zombie tide seemed to be controlled by a mastermind. After suffering heavy losses and not being able to take advantage of it, they actually dropped a large number of ordinary zombies, and instead of attacking, they used them to stop the advance of Krieg's death hordes. Instead, let the Parasite Army move towards the brood. The first battle of Krieger's death army, and its small cost, defeated the millions of corpses in front of them, so that those biochemical broods would shrink the remaining massive army of infected people, no longer attacking humans, but let them return to the three cities that were infected. There are only a large number of ordinary zombies left on the periphery to hinder the attack of human troops. This is undoubtedly an epic victory for the Federation watching this battle and for the Krieger Death Army. However, just when everyone thought that the Foundation's orbital descent operation had been successful, and perhaps they would take a break for a while, who could have imagined that Krieger's Death Army was still advancing? The sexy female reporter on the TV station is, while reporting on this glorious victory, and countless audiences around the world cheered, two huge and astonishing motherships slowly parked in the sky above Manhattan, New York, under the watchful eyes of everyone. The two MTF Foundation task forces that landed in Manhattan. Hell Paratroopers and Nine-Tailed Fox, have completed the work of clearing Manhattan of the Parasite Army. At this time, Chen Feng was sitting in the Black Watch headquarters in Manhattan, talking to the surviving Black Watch commander, the Manhattan District Commander of the JTF, and the newly arrived Here's North American Special Operations Command Commander Elaine Nine a meeting about command, and Chen Feng never imagined that this meeting would even determine the future fate of the world's Blue Star, and it would also be the beginning of a great journey. Start a coalition for this one meeting. Dot. Chapter 93 Expeditionary Forced Resolution, Joint Action Commander, congratulations on a great victory. As soon as we met Chen Feng, we heard Elena's congratulations. We haven't seen each other for a few days, but Elena still looks heroic and dressed like a standard soldier. However, she didn't wear the general uniform today. Instead, she wore a red beret, and simply wore a Federal Army shirt and skirt that highlighted her tight figure. Who can refuse the compliment of a mature and beautiful female officer? But Chen Feng did not get lost in the congratulations. Chen Feng smiled at Elaine, and ignored her overly adoring eyes, and then said, You can talk about the past later, Elaine, there are two generals here. General Randall and General Hammer, what would you like to drink? Coffee? Tea? Coke? The two looked serious, but they both looked very sophisticated, and the majestic federal generals stood in the conference room expressionlessly. Among them, the one-armed general wearing a Black Watch uniform is the supreme commander of the Black Watch, while General Hammer, who looks younger and looks like a tough guy, is the supreme commander of JTF New York State. Just give me a glass of plain water, Commander Chen Feng. I heard that the coffee here directed by Chen Feng is good. I want, a cup of coffee. Compared to the stern-faced General Randall over there, General Hammer on the JTF side is much closer. After all, General Hammer is also a member of the old Lois Sergeant Major's faction in the military, and he is one of his disciples. 1. Chen Feng was not angry about the stern Randall, but said in a relaxed tone, General Randall, I'm not here to ask the teacher to blame, the Black Watch has been so infiltrated. As I said before, it is all the fault of the anti-human organization like the Twelve Round Table Council, and the human traitor obeyed Aya. The Foundation and I express our deepest regret for the heavy losses suffered by your troops. Hearing Chen Feng's words, General Randall's face softened a little, but his tone was still a bit strong. How can a defeated general speak bravely? The Black Watch was severely injured. It was all caused by my incompetence. I will bear all the consequences, but I hope the commander can let the Black Watch go and don't disband this unit. Relax, let's all sit down and talk. For the Black Watch team, although in the game of prototype, it is a villain organization, and they have done many evil things. But putting aside this aspect, 
In fact, most of the soldiers in this army are not good soldiers who simply obey orders. It is not Chen Feng's style to beat this army to death because of the actions of some idiot politicians. Especially when the Federation suffered heavy losses, even Chen Feng had some firefights with the Black Watch, but at this moment the Black Watch has been abandoned by the Council of the Twelve Round Tables. According to Chen Feng's information, it seems that the power of the Twelve Round Table Council in the Federation has all chosen the child strain of the Integrate Abnormal Containment Object 008. After all, the temptation of immortality is still great, even in an inhuman form. Even if the Black Watch troops are maimed and severely damaged by parasitism, they are still a powerful military force far exceeding ordinary troops in the Federation. After all, this is a high-level research project agency under the Federal Ministry of Defense, and the soldiers are all selected from the special forces and security forces of the entire Federation, and have received professional training in biochemical treatment. So after thinking about it for three days, Chen Feng still had someone contact General Randall and offered the Foundation an olive branch. At this time, there was no way out, and General Randall, who was destined to be an abandoned son, was also very decisive, and came here with only a few guards. Looking at the seemingly tough General Randall, who was actually uneasy, Chen Feng said with relief, General, don't worry, as an excellent soldier of the Federation and even human beings, you shouldn't lose your future because of some other people's mistakes. Black Watch is an excellent army composed entirely of elites. Those officers and soldiers did nothing wrong. They should not be disbanded because of these mistakes. Because humanity needs your strength. Hearing Chen Feng's sincere persuasion, not only Randall, the defeated general, but also General Hammer of JTF, and even Elaine were moved by it. General Randall murmured and repeated, Humanity needs our strength. Yes, General Randall, and all you hear, and not just for the Federation, but human beings need your strength. Everyone has also seen the current situation. As the most powerful Federation in Blue Star, this terrible disaster was caused only when the containment 008 was out of control. This definitely also has the responsibility of the Foundation. If it weren't for the Foundation not being able to contain these abnormal containment objects in time, this disaster would not have happened. None of the three expected that Chen Feng would take the initiative to take down the pot. Elaine was even more stunned, and resolutely retorted, Commander. How can you say that? Isn't it human traitors like the Twelve Round Table Council and Obeidai who caused this disaster? What's wrong with the Foundation? General Hammer on the side also echoed, Yes, Commander Chen Feng, it was the Foundation that saved New York. We have all seen it. The Foundation saved New York and the Federation. Without the Foundation, we would surely collapse. If it weren't for the Foundation's orbital airborne and the persuasion of the five-star General Lois, those idiots at the top of the federal military and the parliament might just use nuclear weapons mindlessly and create even greater disasters. General Randall also nodded in agreement and said, if there is a responsibility, the responsibility of Black Watch is longer. Seeing that the fire had come, Chen Feng calmed down, and did not let the generals continue to discuss who should be responsible. After all, at this time, the federal military has already shifted all the responsibility to the human traitors of the Twelve Round Table Council. At this time, Using the influence of the old Sergeant Major Lois, Chen Feng has perfectly influenced the federal military in order to carry out a plan he had always envisioned. Okay, there is no need to discuss these. One thing, I have communicated with many people in the Federation, but I still need a certain amount of force to promote it. In the near future, the federal parliament will have an urgent resolution. I need everyone's help about discussing the expeditionary force resolution. The decision on the expeditionary force was one of Chen Feng's arrangements during this period. If it weren't for Obey Dyer's troubles, it would be very difficult for Chen Feng to push the Federation to agree to this resolution. But when Obey Dyer destroyed three federal cities in just one day, and created tens of millions of corpses, and even infected hundreds of thousands of federal troops, Chen Feng knew that his chance to promote this resolution had come. This resolution on the expeditionary force. The expeditionary force is nothing else, but the rabbit from the east, Dongwang country, and even the Hairy Bear Country, Ursus Union, and the Europa Joint Expeditionary Force in the middle of Europe. The Europa Expeditionary Force is fine, but Dongwang and the Ursus Alliance, if it is the original Federation, will definitely not agree to let them send an expeditionary force to help. Zero Seeking Flowers Oh oh. After all, as Blue Star's largest military power, the White Eagle Federation also has powerful organizations such as SHILD. Even if they choose to block the entire territory and self-isolate, they will not let these people come. Definitely, at present, the White Eagle Federation considers itself the world's most powerful country, or because a certain Wakanda has not been picked out. However, after experiencing the doomsday disaster created by Obadiah, the Federation, which suffered huge losses, had to change its attitude. The rabbit and the furry bear originally planned to watch the fun, but after the disaster of doomsday, the Twelve Round Table Council and Obey Dai used the power of the abnormal containment 008 to contaminate and parasitize hundreds of thousands of federal troops in a short period of time. 
In the face of this terrifying power, the original enemies had to let go of their prejudices, because they had to face a more terrifying common enemy. Chen Feng looked at the three federal generals in the house, and said in a deep voice, the fleet from the Dongwang and Ursus expeditionary forces is about to reach the west coast, and then they can immediately set off from the west coast of the Federation, and it will only take less than ten hours. Just arrived here to support Zero, the Europa Allied forces, the Anzac Army, and even the Pan-Asian Allied forces that integrated Southeast Asia and the Far East, Koryo, Sura, and other countries, even the Afi Federation formed by the countries of Tongliao and the Philippines. At this moment, mankind has realized that in the face of terrible enemies and huge amounts of threats, we must unite. But there are still some idiots in the Federation who are arguing for some trivial interests. The Foundation has mobilized all its forces, and the resolution must be passed quickly. Humanity must unite. Union is the only hope, so I hope you can help me and work together to promote the agreement. We can't let them waste their precious time. Let these expeditionary fleets stand still on the coast because of some stupid bills for more than a dozen, or even dozens of hours. Yes, the Foundation's troops, our Kruger army is advancing, but everyone can see the scale of the aliens they are facing. We only have so many troops. How can we rely on their strength alone? How about a quick fix? Humanity does not depend on the power of the Foundation. General Randall, who had a deep understanding, slapped the table in agreement. I agree, we can't let those insects waste our precious time. General Hammer also nodded and said, Soldiers are dying and bleeding, but those idiots and insects are still dragging their feet. Such things cannot be tolerated. Elaine is even more eager to remonstrate if it is not passed. Commander, Speaker Adam Benford supports our resolution, and Grandpa, he said that he will fully promote the plan. I think we have reached a consensus, so after passing the resolution, we must act as soon as possible, first integrate the military forces in New York City, and establish a unified command system. The Crater Legion of the Foundation is still advancing but their number is too small. After the JTF established a unified system, let them advance to cover the flank of the Creature Legion. I will continue to mobilize the mobile task force, which will be the greatest joint operation in human history. When Chen Feng said this, he looked at the three of them sincerely, and said slowly, then, Chen Feng raised his voice and saluted the three of them, for humanity. The three generals returned a military salute excitedly, and said loudly, for mankind. Wish. Chapter 94 The Foundation brought back all the space troops. Director Nick Fury's decision. Sit down, Phil Coulson. In the director's office of SHIELD headquarters, Phil Coulson sat down a bit primly. Phil Coulson, who came back to report, couldn't wait to get an answer from his commander. Some couldn't wait to ask, Director Nick, have you read my report? Looking at Phil Coulson, who lost his composure because of a bold conjecture, the black marinated egg coughed, then picked up the coffee on the desk, and took a sip. Realizing that he had lost his composure, Phil Coulson sat upright, but still looked at his officer eagerly. Director of Black Braised Egg said solemnly, I don't think your guess is wrong, we have the same idea, Phil Coulson. Just after the Foundation launched the orbital descent operation, the live broadcast of the battle was closely watched by the intelligence department of SHIELD. As a SHIELD high-level agent, Phil Coulson and his agent team, as well as members of the SHIELD exception handling team, all know some secrets of SHIELD especially about extraterrestrial life. After reading Phil Coulson's military report and knowing about Krieger's combat methods through the media and various scouting methods, Electric Beam Fury gradually recalled the memories that he had kept dusty for many years. Chief Black Braised Egg always felt that 173 had a dull pain in his blind eye wearing the blindfold. That was when I was still a low-level agent of SHIELD. At that time, I met Carol, Danforth. Captain Marvel who was listed as a highly confidential file by SHIELD and was one of SHIELD's ultimate trump cards. Nick. Life. As for one of his eyes, he was blinded at that time by a terrifying existence that looked like an orange cat, but was actually an alien devouring beast. SHIELD is no stranger to extraterrestrial declarations, and even Area 51 of the Federation has come into contact with many aliens. The deepest secrets of Area 51, and even the wreckage of an alien ship. The original intention of SHIELD was to deal with the threat of extraterrestrial civilization. SHIELD has been preparing for all of this. However, when the Foundation's aerospace fleet assembled into low Earth orbit, Nick Fury felt his three views split at that moment. From the moment the Foundation's orbital fleet emerged, SHIELD seemed to have split. Pierce, who is Nick Fury's old friend and assistant for many years, believes that the Foundation should be restricted more radically, and the Foundation cannot continue to be alone. Otherwise, with the powerful strength of the Foundation, there will be a day when no one can check and balance Blue Star, and the Foundation will undoubtedly rule the entire Blue Star. The faction headed by Phil Coulson believes that there should be more in-depth cooperation with the Foundation. The Foundation is an organization to protect the survival of mankind. If it wants to dominate, the Foundation can do it long ago. As the director of SHIELD, although Nick Fury is more inclined to Phil Coulson's faction, 
he must be unbiased and selfless, so as to stabilize SHIELD instead of splitting SHIELD. Sir, since you agree with my conjecture, then you should also agree with SHIELD's proposal to deepen contact and exchanges with the Foundation, right? Nick Fury sighed, knowing that it was time to give Phil Coulson the bottom line. Nick Fury rubbed his temples, sighed with some headaches and said, Phil Coulson, yes, you are right, but many things are not as simple as you think. Indeed, the place where the Foundation is likely to truly guard mankind lies in the universe. In the Milky Way, they guard the peace of the human world in places we cannot see. I can see those interstellar troops at a glance. They are not fighting with humans at all, their weapons are used to deal with some enemies that we can hardly imagine. Maybe it might be something like alien bugs, maybe only those things, they will make the equipment like that. And they will also have to dispatch these most elite interstellar soldiers back to the Blue Star to contain that damned containment object 008 in order to protect human beings. To be honest, Phil Coulson, I admire the Foundation from the bottom of my heart, and I admire these heroes who really fight for mankind and have been protecting mankind in obscurity. Having said that, Nick Fury took a deep breath, with helplessness on his face. But SHIELD must maintain the status quo, so that it is more in line with the interests of the Federation, or in other words, the interests of mankind. Pierce and their concerns are also reasonable. We still know too little about the Foundation, and people are most afraid of the things they have seen so far. Because they are too powerful, SHIELD cannot fall to the Foundation. This will cause an imbalance, and things that no one wants to see will happen. Phil Coulson took a deep breath, and Phil Coulson who has always been a good guy, couldn't help cursing, damn house of cards style struggle, I understand, checks and balances. Mudfack Phil Coulson's face was full of depression, and he said in a dull voice after a while, then director Nick, I can always let the SHIELD anomaly handling team contact the foundation in a reasonable way, and cooperate with limited in terms of contained items? Definitely, Phil Coulson it's also part of the flexibility. Then I take my leave, sir. Phil Coulson turned and left, when he walked to the door of the office. He paused and whispered, Thank you sir. Go ahead, Phil Coulson, maybe you're right. Nick Fury heard the sound of the office door being closed. He walked out the window, looked at the white houses and the monuments over there, and let out a long sigh. Nick Fury silently picked up a cigar and lit it. If I were young now, I would like to be you but I can no longer be swayed by blood. We contain, we control, we protect, walk in the darkness, serve the light. Ah, damn, what a beautiful slogan. Mudfack, Nick, Nick, you are becoming the person you hate the most. The smoke filled the office. Nick Fury seemed to be in a trance, and seemed to see outside the city on the east coast, in the icy and snowy world, in the midst of the wind and snow, the who were silently charging towards the boundless biochemical wave with their weapons in hand. Rig soldiers. He seemed to have seen those MTF mobile task forces who risked their lives to contain all abnormalities. The office suddenly fell silent. If it were you. What choice would you make? Nick Fury looked at the page left by Captain Marvel on the bookcase, he seemed to hate himself for being unable to make a choice. SHIELD has planted the pen of division because of the Foundation's orbital descent operation. Although real SHIELD people like Nick Fury, even if they have selfish intentions, they are mostly idealists in the final analysis. Just like the beautiful Chinese people during the Cold War, many people really believe in lighthouses and the zero that can lead mankind to progress. Otherwise, there wouldn't be so many federal people who went to Mokchun after finding out that the image of the lighthouse had collapsed, and became Mokchun's spies planted in Eagle Source for free, even without compensation, just for the ideals in their hearts. SHIELD is the same, many people who join SHIELD, except those who are absorbed by Hydra. In fact, most of the pure SHIELD staff, they really joined SHIELD because of the concept of SHIELD, that is, to protect the survival of human beings, and exist as human shields. It's not hard to understand why they descended to fight because of the Foundation's orbit, and achieved excellent results. After Creature's death armies and Damio became famous in the first battle, the employees who gained the most fans were those employees working in SHIELD. Naturally, this is because many people in SHIELD consider the Creature Legion to be the Foundation's interstellar force. However, this elite interstellar force was dispatched back from outer space, and put into this terrible battle that almost killed people for the survival of human beings. It turns out that the Foundation has a Space Force, so why didn't the Foundation's Space Force, SHIELD, find any cobwebbed races? Many intelligence personnel of SHIELD have come to such a conclusion, naturally because the Space Force of the Foundation has been conducting unknown battles in places that SHIELD cannot observe. Otherwise, why would the Creator Death Army be so proficient in killing those biochemical aliens? Why are their weapons and equipment far different from normal, 
and they don't seem to be used to fight the modern human army at all. That is naturally because their weapons and systems are used to deal with non-human beings. The staff and agents of SHIELD have always wanted to work hard to defend the peace of Blue Star. They are an organization established to resist malicious civilizations outside the Earth. Now I see that another organization is already silently carrying out this work, and the progress of the work is completely unknown, and no one even knows how long they have been fighting for this and how much they have paid. This is simply a group of unknown heroes, and it is completely different from those superheroes. SHIELD's view of the Foundation is like looking at the Global Strategy Bureau in 1.4. There are so many people who are obviously doing the greatest work, but they are unknown to the public. After the work, they hide their merits and fame, and then think of their own work. It's a perfect substitution, okay? But all this is another matter from the perspective of those Snake and Shield employees who have been corrupted by Hydra. The Foundation actually hid the Cosmic Army. Moreover, there is such an elite and terrifying force, it must be for the purpose of ruling the world, it is simply unforgivable. Before there was the traitor of Hydra, the Chaos Splitter, and then came the Foundation. Both of them are existences that hinder Hydra from ruling the world. They deserve to die. At this time, Nick Fury can only pretend to be confused as much as possible, and be a paper painter, otherwise SHIELD will split if it is not done properly. But Nick Fury looked at the last piece of advice in Phil Coulson's report. It was an urgent resolution on Parliament Hill, whether to allow expeditionary forces from various countries to arrive in the territory of the Federation to assist the Federation in eradicating biological and chemical aliens. Nick Fury finally made up his mind. At this point, he decided to abandon selfishness. Nick Fury seemed to feel that he had returned to himself when he was a hot-blooded teenager, and he picked up the phone silently. Pick me up Chancellor Adam Benford. Chapter 95 The Spider Sheds Tears, Gwen, Don't Let Me Down Just when all parties have decided to promote the resolution on the proposal of the expeditionary force in the federal parliament, Gwen Stacy, the female Spider-Man, is embarking on a journey to find her father. After the orbital descent, Chen Feng did not force Gwen Stacy to join the battle because she was a civilian. After all, Gwen Stacy is still a pink and tender JK, who was involved in the ally with the storm because of the all territories incident before, and was forced to fight until now. In fact, Gwen was exhausted physically and mentally. Maybe Chen Feng saw her in her exhaustion, so Chen Feng gave Gwen a special correspondence certificate and a certificate of the Foundation's field agent, saying that she should go to a safe place first. Relax in the rear. You have done enough. The next battle is too dangerous. As a civilian, I don't think you have any reason to continue fighting, Gwen. There is no need to force yourself. When Gwen heard what Chen Feng said, Gwen didn't say much, and took the documents silently. The Global Strategy Bureau is located at the base of Queens, New York. At the moment, it is very lively here. There are a large number of homeless refugees temporarily living here. When Gwen entered here through the disinfection area, after consulting all the way, she finally found her friend who stayed on the ground. Catherine, you look good, and now you are the head here. Seeing Gwen, Catherine's face suddenly showed joy. Look who is here. I heard that you and the director went to see a big scene. Gwen scratched the back of her head shyly. Yes. As she spoke, she laughed excitedly again. I went to the moon. Wow, that's really cool, but the details go without saying. So what is little Gwen looking for here? Could it be that she just came here to eat and drink with her sister? Catherine took out a few limited edition first strike energy bars 09 specially provided by the global agency from her pocket like a magic trick, and this kid Gwen wanted to take it well. Gwen picked up the chocolate energy bar, unceremoniously tore open the package and took a bite. Her eyes were bulging like a little hamster. I'm actually here to ask you for help. Ah, uh, cough cough cough. Shui shui. Gwen who was choked, took the can of coke handed over by Catherine, unscrewed the can and drank it down fiercely, and then the girl showed a happy expression. I'm looking for a man. His name is George Stacy. Do you know where he is? George Stacy? Okay you wait. Catherine tapped the keyboard skillfully, looked at the information on it, and quickly found it. M, um, is he your relative? I actually saw him in Curry, the file of the Global Strategic Bureau. He's my father. What happened to him? Unfortunately, he and his agent team received an order three days ago to support the JTF in Cold Spring Town. Hearing this, Gwen wanted to leave immediately, but was stopped by Catherine. Wait Gwen, it's very dangerous there. Not long ago, it was detected that a parasite army seems to be advancing there. Put on these equipment and go there. Thank you Catherine. Picking up the equipment given by Catherine, Gwen skillfully ran outside, then launched the cobweb at the tall building, and quickly swung towards the destination. Cold Spring is a famous tourist town around New York. Before the blockade, it had a pleasant scenery and was close to the Hudson River. After the outbreak of the nationwide blockade incident, it was a stronghold of the JTF, and even after the Doomsday incident, it became a key strategic location. Watch out, PRG. An anti-tank rocket blasted the Humvee blocking the bridge. George Stacy lowered his body to avoid the steel fragments flying over his head, and broke out in a cold sweat. The people had already evacuated, and Cold Spring Town, 
which was no longer peaceful in the past, had been reduced to a battlefield. The drone gun turret next to George is frantically pouring ammunition at the attacking parasite army. Sir, what are we going to do? There's a tank in the southeast corner. Hell, a parasitic M1A2. Anti-tank team, follow us. Fight according to the original plan. Puma 2, watch out. The tank is coming your way. George looked at the tower not far away. The sniper of the Puma team was constantly reporting the enemy's information to the entire army in this extremely dangerous bunker with almost no escape route. Sure enough, George felt the ground trembling, and the sound of tracks came, accompanied by the parasitic ex-ATF soldiers and Black Watch soldiers, showing a coordinated posture of infantry and tanks. Two Cougar teams national agents and a team of JTF are hiding in corners and buildings and watching carefully. George took a deep breath and picked up the detonator on the side. After seeing the tank was in place, he pressed the detonation button suddenly, with a loud noise. The parasitic M1A2 was directly paralyzed by the terrible power of the C4 bomb, and its tracks were broken. At this time, two JTF anti-tank team soldiers rushed out immediately, picked up the AT4 anti-tank rocket launcher in their hands and aimed at the paralyzed parasitic M1A2 tank to launch. With a bang, the JTF soldier directly threw away the empty tube in his hand, and the agent and the soldiers immediately opened fire violently, almost smashing the parasite soldiers into a sieve. After being submerged and fell to the ground by the rain of bullets, the soldier's brain burst open not long after, revealing the disgusting parasite inside, and then he was killed by bullets again. Seeing that the ambush took effect, George breathed a sigh of relief. It seems that this wave of attacks has been resisted. However. The sound of panic from the snipers in the team came from the radio. Damn it, there are more armored troops and parasitic soldiers, be careful. At this time, George saw five JTF soldiers cleaning the battlefield and collecting some weapons and ammunition on the battlefield, but they had been exposed on the street. Can't help shouting anxiously, hey, you guys hide quickly. There are still enemies. George saw a former soldier raised his head, and then a 30 mm high explosive fragmentation shell beat him to pieces. Five JTF soldiers were directly beaten into human form by 30 mm high explosives, leaving only the wreckage of various weapons and defective corpses. Shet, quickly retreat to the second line of defense. The machine gunner suppresses. The M249 machine gun mounted at a concealed and hidden corner let out a roar, and the automatic machine gun that formed an angle with it crazily suppressed the parasite soldiers who were charging. George threw out a smart grenade turned over and hid in the bunker, and an explosion took away two enemies. However, at this time George saw several parasite soldiers rushing into the building where the machine gunner was. Damn it, they're coming up. Cougar 1, we're done. I don't want to become those ghosts. Bastards, let's die together. There was a whoosh on the radio, and then George saw an explosion on the second floor. He shouted to the soldiers on the side with a sullen face. Don't stop firing, keep shooting, and if you can't resist it, retreat to the next line of defense. We must hold this bridge. At this time, the anti-tank team on the tower used a javelin to take away a parasite's M2 infantry tank, while the snipers kept shooting one by one. Barrett's sniper rifle hit the head of a parasite soldier, and the parasite cannot be revived either. But because of too many shots, he didn't move. When the sniper looked for the target again, he saw the black hole of the parasitic M182 tank's muzzle. The next second, George saw the tower collapse directly by a high explosive bomb. Puma 3, get out. You're all alone there. My place is full of those monsters, and I can't go away. George, I'm going to detonate those explosives, I hope you can hold out a little longer. Farewell, brother. Let's go first. George didn't even have time to be heavy, but watched his teammates detonate the explosives. Not long ago, they were still watching the live broadcast in that building, watching the Foundation's track descending to fight, and everyone was full of confidence. But this is war, how can there be no dead man in war? George didn't have time to grieve, but at this moment, with the advancement of the M1A2, the position on the bridgehead fell, and it could no longer be defended. George had to make a decision and shouted, retreat to the last line of defense. As he spoke, George held the HK416 assault rifle in his hand and covered one after another young JTF soldiers to pass the bridge. Seeing that his teammates were almost doing well, he patted the TF official who had been covering the rear of the palace with him. It's time for us to withdraw, alternate cover. After finishing speaking, George continued to stand where he was pulling the trigger on the parasitic soldiers who appeared. However, unless it hit the head, the effect would not be good, but he still suppressed them. The last drone gun turret on the defense line has also misfired due to lack of ammunition. Sir, retreat quickly, we will cover you. George no longer hesitated to turn over and run to the other side, but he felt his calf heat up, and then he fell on the bridge as if he had lost his strength. George felt that his bulletproof plate seemed to be pierced. He sat on the bridgehead, watching the enemies coming in like a tide and the faces of the young JTF soldiers over there were full of despair. One after another soldiers fighting at the last moment on the other side of the bridge were parasitized, killed, and fell one after another. 
George struggled to pick up the HK-416 assault rifle in his hand. He couldn't even aim, and he couldn't even hold the gun steadily, but he still fired all the bullets. Another bullet hit his unprotected right arm, at which point George dropped his rifle and leaned against the bridgehead, with a trembling left hand. He took out a 277M1911 pistol from the holster and pointed it at the M1A2 tank that was passing straight through the bridge without even shooting at him, but rolling straight over. George pulled the trigger. One shot, another shot. He aimed at the parasitic M1A2 with difficulty, and pulled the trigger again. Miraculously, George saw the M1A2's turret overturned, one after another. F slash A181 all airspace fighter jets passed overhead. The town ahead is being shelled, bombed, and the parasite army is being beaten into pieces. One after another, soldiers from the nine-tailed fox mobile task force in black combat uniforms rushed past George. The KF-60 main battle tank slowly drove across the bridge. Damn it, George, you're bleeding a lot, said the old JTF sergeant, holding a bandage to his bleeding wound. Medic. Medic. The sergeant called out to the nearby medical soldiers in a panic. However, this does not prevent George from looking at the beautiful landscape, but he feels that his eyelids are getting heavier and heavier. Gwen stared blankly at the familiar figure sitting on the bridge, and tears soaked her face instantly. Trembling, Gwen stepped forward and looked at his father in the overall agent combat uniform. Gwen, is that you? George Stacy's voice was labored and unbelievable. Gwen's sight has been blurred by tears. He leaned over and held the old father's cold right hand tightly. He opened his mouth as if to say something, and Gwen leaned forward. Gwen dot 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 don't disappoint dot 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 don't disappoint dot 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 Gwen. 17. Don't disappoint what? Dad, wake up. Dad, Gwen trembled and cried into tears, tightly clutching the blood-stained agent watch. Looking at the smiling figure like a sculpture, she gently helped the old father close his eyes. On the radio, Chen Feng's voice sounded, I am Chen Feng, the commander of the Foundation. It is now December 30th, at 10.27 am, the first batch of expeditionary troops from Dongwang has arrived at the front line, and we are about to launch. Launch a counterattack and completely destroy those alien lairs before the new year comes. Now. We unite. Along with Chen Feng's declaration of joint action on the radio, the military doctor rushed over. What he saw was a girl who cried out of her wits, holding a blood-stained agent watch. Eyes gradually became firm. Dot. Chapter 96 Gwen's Decision The arrival of the Dongwang Expeditionary Force Gwen Stacy tore off her father's soldier nameplate. Although I don't know why Gwen appeared in this war-torn battlefield, the JTF veterans on the side can only comfort her as much as possible. After a simple prayer, the priest accompanying the army began to help these JTF soldiers collect the corpses on the battlefield together. He worked so hard to find his father, but he never thought that his father had already died in battle, although he didn't know why he became an agent of the whole territory, that was not important anymore. In this cold spring town, a national agent team code named Puma rests here. When this cold winter is over, it is unknown how many agents will sleep forever. Gwen thought of his father's last words on his deathbed, don't fail. Don't disappoint what? Don't disappoint the victory and peace they sacrificed for? Touching the soldier's nameplate and watch in his hand, Gwen seemed to have found a way forward at this moment. He should use his ability to do more meaningful things. Perhaps, choose the path of old George Stacy. Looking at the V-44X Blackfish transport helicopter passing by in the sky, Gwen thought of Alaga, and wondered what she was doing now. Gwen had heard before that Commander Chen Feng had personally told her that she would is the key to victory in this war. After the Foundation's orbital airborne, the heroic creature Death Corps and the Mobile Task Force fought for a day and a night to push back the front line by at least 20 kilometers and save the precarious Jefferson Line. In the emergency National Assembly that was convened after this, the Expeditionary Force Act was passed. Authorized by the United Nations, at least hundreds of countries around the world have sent troops, and a joint expeditionary force of 500,000 people is about to arrive in the federal mainland. These expeditionary forces will work side by side with federal forces to eliminate the threat of huge amounts of alien aliens. At the same time, the White Eagle Federation will urgently dispatch federal reinforcements from overseas, as well as two aircraft carrier formations and three Air Force groups deployed overseas, back to the East Coast. At 11.30 a.m. on December 30, 30th White 20 air transport formations arrived at Kennedy International Airport. At 13.49 on December 30, Dongwang had a Jingzhou class nuclear powered aircraft carrier with hull number 0054055A class destroyers of 10,000 tons, and several frigates. A huge fleet of 20 ships, including supply ships, appeared on the East Coast. In this way, the 50,000 Dongwang Expeditionary Army set foot on a strange country on the other side of the ocean. Wearing a military uniform of Dongwang Army and a helmet, the intellectual black haired female officer who was still eye catching even without makeup stepped down from Y20. The cold wind from New York made her tighten her neckline and rubbed her cheeks vigorously. After setting foot on this strange and foreign land, 
She always had a very strange feeling. Major Lin Yun, get in the car. General Ji Shan and the others are going to meet with the commander of the coalition forces soon Tilda, the commander of the White Eagle Federation. I heard it seems to be an immigrant of Dongwang descent. Is it Chen Feng? That's right. You have to pay attention when you're translating later. After all, General Li Qingshan's family has a long history of education. If his grandfather, Major General Li Yunlong, had the equipment we have today, he would dare to fight to the capital. Talking and laughing with the intelligence officer at the side, Major Lin Yun sat in the back seat of a Dongfeng warrior. Driving along the road, from time to time you can see New Yorkers gathered on both sides of the road to enjoy the fire. It can be seen that these Yankees are not having a good time in this picture. It's like a movie, a place full of disasters. Ying Chan's vitality has been seriously injured this time. I never imagined that I would come here in such a way today. The federal people on the street looked at the armored troops of the expeditionary force passing by and the infantry marching in line with complicated expressions. A huge torrent of brand new VT-30 main battle tanks, VN-30 infantry fighting vehicles, VN-20 armored personnel carriers, PH-30 self-propelled howitzers, WD-400 long-range rocket launchers, and various command vehicles and radar vehicles. Not far away. There was a burst of singing. Just as the pear blossoms were blooming all over Tanya, soft veils floated on the river, Kato Shaw stood on the steep bank, singing like the bright spring. Lin Yun saw the Ursa's Alliance Expeditionary Army that merged with the Dongwei Expeditionary Army at the other end, and had a strange feeling that the Rabbit and D.A. Mao's Expeditionary Army actually traveled together in Yingjiang's native city in this way. The Dongfeng warriors drove slowly to the entrance of a coalition command department and stopped. Lin Yun opened the door and got out and then saw another tiger-armored vehicle following all the way. A blonde female major wearing the uniform of the Ursa's Federation also opened the door at this time. The two looked at each other in the same way, and there was a strange sense of intersection of fate. Karina, an expert in electronic intelligence warfare of the Ursa's Alliance Army. Lin Yun, Dongwang Army electronic intelligence warfare expert. Karina and Lin Yun, two beauties, shook hands and smiled at each other. Walking into the headquarters, I heard a burst of laughter from inside. Ha 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 ha, Mikhail. The old man met again, the last time we met was during the peace mission. Oh, damn Davari, Lee, you bastard, if there is a chance next time, I will definitely beat you hard. Major General Mikhail rubbed his nose, this bastard, the peace mission will think of the poor performance of his own army, 30,000 people were defeated by the Synthesis Brigade on the opposite side. As a result, which part of this product is not opened and which part is lifted? Ha ha ha, just kidding, I didn't expect you to be the expeditionary force sent by the Ursa's alliance this time and after this battle is over, we, Lao Li, will give you two cups. Ha, huh, that's a good idea. I brought a lot of good wines from my collection, vodka produced in Ursa's, paired with salad, smoked salmon and grilled sausage, and some Ursa's pickles, ha ha. Speaking of this, Major General Mikhail took a breath, as if he had already smelled the aroma of wine. Good guy, who is afraid of anyone. I brought a lot of Mao Tai, and when the time comes, I will fry some small yellow croakers and peanuts. Li Qingshan was bragging with Mikhail, when he saw Lin Yan walking in, he couldn't help laughing. Hey, Xiao Lin is here, come on, Xiao Gao, I'll leave the translation to Xiao Lin. Let me introduce you, Mikhail, this is Lin Yun, my niece, the best electronic warfare expert and weapon expert of our Dongwang army, a genius who is proficient in eight languages. Hearing Li King shines showing off, Mikhail snorted coldly, not to be outdone. Karina, I will hand over the translation work to you later. Karina is also the best intelligence warfare expert and weapons expert in Ursus. And she is also a high-level talent who is proficient in eight languages. Karina and Lin Yun couldn't laugh or cry when they watched their two top officials comparing each other like children. An elegant and generous mature female major general in the uniform of the Federal Army came over. Welcome the expeditionary forces from Dongwang and Ursus. I am Major General Elaine of the Federal North American Special Operations Command. Lieutenant General Chen Feng, commander of the Joint Operations Command is already waiting for you. In an instant, Mikhail and Li Qingshan resume their business-like expressions. Follow Elaine Nun to the Joint Operations Command. Various high-ranking JTF officers and federal military staff in Norda's headquarters are all working around one person. Apostrophe Vertical Bar Commander Chen Feng, Major General Mikhail of the Ursus Expeditionary Army and Major General Li Qingshan of the Eastern Huang Expeditionary Army have arrived. Major General Mikhail and Major General Li Qingshan were stunned when they saw Chen Feng as the Commander-in-Chief. After all, Chen Feng's public appearance scenes will undergo certain technical processing, so many people have heard of his name, but they don't know his age. So when I saw such a young military executive, I couldn't help being shocked, 
but it also caused some hesitation. Is such a young commander really reliable? It was also the first time for Chen Feng to see people from his hometown. When he saw Li Qingshan and his entourage, he couldn't help but feel a sense of intimacy. Chen Feng put down the work at hand and stood up to meet him, speaking fluent Dongwang and Russian. On behalf of the Federation, I am very grateful to the Ursa's Alliance and Dongwang for their military support, and thank you for letting go of your prejudices and choosing to fight side by side at a critical moment. Speaking of this, Chen Feng saluted the two of them. As a human being, I can see that all countries in the world can fight together, fight for peace, and destroy the contained objects together. Limos, I am honored for this. I express my highest respect to you, two generals. You let me see the sincerity alter of versus and Dong Wang. In the future, the Foundation also hopes to deepen cooperation with other countries, and jointly control the disaster of abnormal containment objects so as to prevent today's tragedy from repeating itself on the territory of other countries in the world. Those words were touching, Major General Mikhail and Major General Li Qingshan could feel the sincerity of each other, this commander is completely different from those traditional soldiers of Ying Jiang, this is a real soldier who fights for idealism. Perhaps only such a coalition commander can reassure Hakka, no problem. Commander Chen Feng, our department will fully cooperate with your operations. My department is the same. I didn't expect Commander Chen Feng's hometown dialect to be so fluent. If you have the opportunity, I hope you can go back and have a look at your hometown. If there is a chance, I would like to go back and have a look. Chen Feng said with a smile, but he knew that his real hometown, Dongwang hometown in the universe, he might never go back. It's just that Karina and Lin Yan were a little depressed at this time. Why didn't the commander play his cards according to the routine? When I emigrated from my hometown, it's okay to maintain a fluent native dialect. You are so familiar with this Russian language. Then how do we translate it? Chapter 97 Chen Feng. The general demeanor, has a phobia of insufficient firepower. Everyone, let's get to the point. Please look at the battle map. In the Joint Operations Command, Chen Feng stood in front of the strategic map and unreservedly showed the real-time battle situation map to Major General Mikhail and Major General Li Qinian. All kinds of icons, numbers, mountains and rivers, and various strategic locations are displayed on the map representing the crisscrossing of the military cards of the enemy and us. The densely packed soldiers were evenly arranged around the new line of defense established by Krieger's advance. Major General Mikhail and Major General Li King Shan, two experienced military chiefs, quickly saw the clues. Among these badges, the badges of Krieger's death army and the mobile task force of the Foundation are like sharp knives cutting apart the households applying for bids in Blocks B from the Parasite Army. Every Krieger death corps unit and mobile task force occupies a favorable terrain firmly controlling the initiative of the battlefield on Chen Feng's side. Make them unable to communicate with each other, and as long as there are enough line-filling troops, three encirclement nets can be formed immediately, completely isolating the three broods. Experts will know if there is one as soon as they make a move. Just by looking at this map, Major General Mikhail and Major General Li Qingshan have already confirmed Chen Feng's command ability. Even if it is not his personal ability, he still has an excellent staff team, so it is undoubtedly very reliable to hand over the command of the overall army to Chen Feng. Pointing to the strategic map, Chen Feng talked eloquently, Major General Mikhail, Major General Li Qingshan, as you can see, our foundation troops have cooperated with the federal troops to occupy the initiative on the battlefield. But now we are facing the problem of insufficient troops. The difference in the number of the enemy and ourselves is too great. Although the number of troops on my 517 has reached 280,000, it is still not enough. We have to make sure that the infected area is cleaned up, and that we don't let a single infected person or biochemical alien escape. Federal 101st Air Assault Division, 82nd Air Assault Division, Big Red 1st Division, and 1st Marine Division are arriving, along with five National Guard troops that were urgently mobilized from other states. In total, the Federation will assemble these 120 000 strong troops tomorrow, that is, before 8 o'clock a.m. on the 31st, and will continue to mobilize 80,000 troops to follow up with JTF reinforcements, including the 100,000 Vanguard troops of the Ursas and Dongwang Expeditionary Forces, as well as the Europa Expeditionary Force, the Pan-Asian Expeditionary Force, and the Afro-African Expeditionary Force that will arrive here tomorrow. The total is 300,000 people. At the same time, Together with the 20,000 elite special forces personnel of the Special Operations Command, the Joint Combat Force will have a huge combat force of 800,000. Due to the lack of troops before, Krieger's death army stagnated when they advanced to areas less than 30 kilometers away from the three target cities. Fortunately, Ursus and Dongwang's expeditionary forces have arrived here at this time. In order to cooperate with the general offensive launched tomorrow, I need to advance another 30 kilometers in each of the three directions, all the way to the city. Don't worry, you too. I will use the mobile task force of Krieger's death army and the foundation troops as sharp knives. 
The two expeditionary forces only need to cooperate with our flank to open the gap and fill the flank front. However, after hearing Chen Feng's battle plan, Li King Shan, as one of Dong Wang's mighty generals, opened his mouth to refute. Chen Feng, Commander, I am slightly older than you, so I dare to call you brother. Chen Feng smiled, looked at General Dong Wang who looked like Li Yunlong, and nodded, it's just a title, they are all from Dong Wang, so there is no need to be polite. Then I'm overstepping, brother Chen Feng. Although our expeditionary army is a guest army, none of my troops are cowards. We are here to maintain world peace, to eliminate the enemies of mankind, and to eliminate those bastard alien troops. I believe that the soldiers have already made up their minds. How can there be any reason for the friendly army to fight in the front while we watch the show behind? What's more, we have also seen your battle. You are all fighting in the most dangerous place. If we came here from thousands of miles, it is just to do this kind of miscellaneous work. I, Li King Shan. I'm not a person who is greedy for life and fear of death. If you want to fight, please entrust the most difficult task to me. Us. Major General Mikhail heard the two talking in Dong Wang language, but he couldn't hear it very well. Karina on the side quickly translated for him. After listening, Mikhail also said stiffly in Russian, Davari Chen, we Ursas are not people who are greedy for life and afraid of death. We have brought the most advanced equipment for this, and we also request to fight main attack. A wry smile appeared on Chen Feng's face. In order to save his face, Ursas and Dong Huang sent two arrogant soldiers. Also, for such a major event as the establishment of an international expeditionary force around the world to fight for the peace of mankind, how can countries not show their faces? Chen Feng took a deep breath and said, OK, then we will launch an attack together, but because of this battle, we face the special nature of the enemy. The Foundation will provide some assistance to the expeditionary force. Dr. Wilhelm, please explain to them. I saw that Dr. Wilhelm, who had not shown up for a long time, had been researching various results walked into the headquarters. All the senior officers looked at him curiously. Dr. Wilhelm slowly opened the suitcase. What appeared inside were several different types of bullets. Soldiers who are sensitive and familiar with bullets can tell at a glance that they are 5.45 mm bullets of Ursus, 7.62 caliber bullets, 5.8 caliber bullets of Dong Wang, 5.56 mm caliber bullets of NATO, and 7.62 caliber bullets of NATO caliber. Wait, gentlemen. This is an antivirus armor-piercing bullet specially developed by the Foundation to target infected bodies in consideration of the insufficient penetration ability of the active bullets. Age. These bullets all contain diluted serum components, which can effectively inhibit the 008 substrain virus contained in those zombies. This is a modified virus based on the T-virus developed by the Council of the Twelve Round Tables and the Chaos Splitters. Our antivirus armor-piercing bullets can effectively inactivate them. The armor-piercing performance of the improved armor-piercing projectile has increased by nearly 50% compared with your original armor-piercing projectile. 1. The Foundation also urgently dispatched a batch of vaccine serum, which will allow everyone to effectively resist infection. Finally, we also provided a total of 3,000 experimental portable individual electromagnetic gun systems for use by the expeditionary forces. Finally, in order to coordinate command, we will distribute a total of 1,000 sets of Foundation-specific information-based command and combat systems. Listening to the parameters given by Dr. Wilhelm. The eyes of Major General Mikhail and Major General Li Qingshan almost lit up. Li Qingshan is better. Mikhail, as the general of the Ursus Alliance, is used to being poor. When did he see these good things? Especially the experimental individual electromagnetic gun system. They are all good things. I didn't he expect that the Foundation would be so generous and give so many supplies when I came to war. It's really magnificent. Your Foundation is still very interesting. With these bullets and vaccines, our soldiers will be more confident. After Dr. Wilhelm finished his technical explanation. He left. Afterwards, there will be technical sergeants from the Foundation to teach Ursus, Dong Wang Expeditionary Force and the factory's troops how to use the portable individual electromagnetic gun. Chen Feng interrupted the smiling general of the Expeditionary Army, and continued talking about his battle plan. Everyone, you should have seen the space carrier above your head, right? That's the Foundation's Goliath-class airspace-to-ground suppression mothership, which specializes in ground-to-ground -ground suppression missions. After the Expeditionary Force completes the supplies and is vaccinated, the Goliath-class airspace-to-ground suppression mothership will attack to carry out the ground-to-ground -ground suppression mission. At that time, the Federal Air Force and the Foundation Air Force will also act together. I hope to be able to gather all the artillery we have on hand to form three long-range artillery strike clusters to cover the enemies in three directions with strong firepower. The Foundation's base has already carried out emergency production, and a large number of shells and rockets that can match various long-range rockets have been delivered, which is enough for us to blow up those aliens to the bottom of the sky. 
W. At the same time, the three Krager siege regiments will also cooperate to carry out fire strikes together. After the firepower preparations were completed, we immediately started advancing operations based on the three FOB forward bases built by the new defense line. After the artillery bombardment is over, the Federal Air Force bombers will carry out carpet bombing of the bombed area. After the fire coverage is complete and the Air Force bombing is over, armed helicopter units, air gunboats, and the Goliath aircraft carrier will enter the country for continuous ground suppression. At that time, the ground troops will advance all the way until the aliens are completely surrounded and killed near the brood area, and after all this is done, we will launch a general offensive to completely wipe out these aliens and human traitors. After listening to Chen Feng's combat deployment, Mikhail, Li King Shan, Elaine, Hammer, General Randall and others all felt very excited. Davari, this battle plan is really good, I like it. It's the first time for me, Lao Li, to fight such a battle of wealth. It's very enjoyable, Commander. Special Operations Command is ready anytime, anywhere. Blackwatch 2, we've regrouped. JTF is ready for combat at any time. Seeing that everyone was full of fighting spirit, Chen Feng nodded with an affirmative expression. Okay, this time, let's fight together. Due to time constraints, we must launch an attack on time at 1600 hours this afternoon. Fight a night battle, please. Lead your troops to your designated combat area immediately, prepare for combat, and dismiss the meeting. Chapter 98 The Global Battle Scene the insane firebombing. Welcome everyone to watch the international news. This is the host Sally. Today's big news is that the Joint Operations Command has been established and plans to launch a full-line counter-offensive. According to information received by our station, the Foundation Forces, the JTF Joint Armed Forces, and the International Expeditionary Force have announced the establishment of a Joint Combat Command. The commander of the Joint Operations Command is Lieutenant General Chen Feng, who was urgently appointed by the Federation. After taking office, Lieutenant General Chen Feng, the commander of the Joint Operations Command, announced that he will launch a full-line counter-attack today to control the biochemical disaster to a minimum. About Lieutenant General Chen Feng's resume, there is almost a cloud of fog, only reliable sources know that Lieutenant General Chen Feng is the director of the National Strategy Bureau and has been serving in the Foundation Forces. After Lieutenant General Chen Feng took office, he formulated a series of combat plans vigorously and swiftly, and successfully executed the famous battle that almost saved the entire Federation the North American Orbital Drop Operation. The First World War was successful. After saving the precarious Jefferson Line, the Creature Death Corps of the Orbital Drop Force has advanced the front line by 30 kilometers. Today, the front line will continue to be advanced by the Joint Forces. When the Joint Combat Forces are about to counterattack across the board, our Taiwan war reporters are fortunate to have passed the authorization of the Joint Combat Command, and can enter the space carrier that has been parked over New York to broadcast real-time global battlefield live broadcasts for everyone. Let's connect with the frontline war correspondent, Helen. In the TV screen, a woman wearing a reporter's helmet and a reporter's bulletproof vest appeared. At the moment war reporter Helen was standing on the bridge of a sci-fi battleship. Helen, this is the live broadcast room, can you hear it? All right host, this is Helen. I can hear you clearly. As the host and the audience can see, I'm on the Foundation's space carrier, the number one ship of the Gloria class, Gloria, and my position is the bridge. In addition to us, there are also a small number of war reporters from well-known international media who have been invited to live broadcast the entire front counterattack on this sci-fi and charming powerful battleship. Hey, look, did you geese see that? That handsome looking young commander over there is the new Lieutenant General Chen Feng of the Joint Operations Force. It's a pity that we don't have the authorization to interview our heroic commander who won a brilliant victory in the battle not long ago. Elaine looked at the reporters and cameras that were broadcasting live over there, frowned slightly, and walked quickly to Chen Feng's side. My lord commander, is it really okay to let these media go to the command headquarters to conduct live field reports? This has never happened before, and it may cause serious losses to us. Chen Feng waved his hands indifferently, and said with a smile, This is the best ZZ show, Elaine, we can't fight in obscurity. Then the people of the Federation will not remember our sacrifices, and will not be grateful to Dade for remembering who it is saved the Union. You don't want all the deaths of your subordinates to be deducted, do you, Elaine? Furthermore, we have an overwhelming advantage. This will be an extremely easy battle. The counterattack force of the Twelve Round Table Council will not be worth mentioning. Elaine looked at Chen Feng, who was holding the winning ticket, and nodded half understanding. I always felt that sometimes the commander's style was not like that of Dong Wang people, but rather like Ying Jiang's style. The opponent performs extreme intimidation. If Chen Feng knew what Elaine was thinking, he would definitely tell her with a smile, that if you are poor, you need to intersperse with tactics, and if you are strong, you can cover with firepower. If you have enough strength, you really have to show it and show your muscles. If you don't have enough strength, how can the enemy be afraid and surrender? The premise of defeating others without fighting is that you have the strength far beyond your opponent. At this time, Detective Natasha Romanoff, 
who was acting as a temporary assistant, reminded, Commander. The time is almost up. Chen Feng glanced at the military watch while talking, 1528 and 32 seconds, it's almost here. Communication soldier, open the full channel communication for me. The next moment, Chen Feng's holographic image appeared on the command system channels of every coalition army, and his orders were communicated to every participating army by radio. I am Chen Feng, the commander-in-chief of the Joint Operations Command. It is now 1530, and I announce the start of Operation Heaven's Punishment. Battleship advance. Following Chen Feng's order, the 550,000 ton behemoth, Goliath's air-to-ground suppression mothership's engine room erupted with huge amounts of roars, and then another sister ship also started up. The two steel behemoths started their engines and slowly flew forward from the sky above New York City. The countless soldiers and civilians below instantly erupted with huge amounts of cheers. They waved their arms at huge amounts of ships, seeing off the departure of these two steel behemoths. At the same time, on the three fronts, countless tanks, infantry-filled infantry fighting vehicles and armored personnel carriers, self-propelled artillery, and rocket launchers launched one after another, and a large number of infantry on transport trucks accompanied the rear and the mighty march towards the, the infected area advances. Glorious CIC Combat Information Control System, UKKs has taken over, and the CIC has been restarted. Engine started, maintain level 2 normal speed forward. The 6th, 8th, 9th, and 10th carrier-based aircraft squadrons are ready. 17. Electronic Warfare Snow Wind Squadron is ready. The reactor is functioning well and the weapons system has been checked. After listening to the report on the ship's situation, Chen Feng, who was temporarily serving as the captain and campaign commander, nodded in satisfaction, then sat on the captain's seat, overlooking the scenery below. In the shots of those war reporters, the Goliath-class ground suppression aircraft carrier skimmed the clouds above. About 20 minutes after the flight, the sound of the snow wind that temporarily appeared as the battleship CIC came has arrived at the target airspace commander. Do you want to start releasing the carrier-based aircraft formation? Let the carrier-based aircraft squadron attack. The 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th and 10th carrier-based aircraft squadrons, attack, the catapults are connected, open the hatch, and launch. With the opening of the flight deck, one after another carrier-based fighter jets were ejected from the two Gloria-class aircraft carriers and headed towards their destination. The war reporters who were filming this scene couldn't help but exclaimed when they saw the mighty fleet. At this time, not far ahead, a large number of federal military planes also arrived at the same time. There are more than 500 fighter planes densely packed in the sky and these fighter planes almost cover the sky. After Chen Feng ordered the release of the carrier-based aircraft, he issued another order. The 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th large missile bays in the tail compartment are unlocked, and the flame tactical missiles are launched. The 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th large missile bays in the tail compartment launch Jericho Type 3 split air-to-surface missiles. Under the command of Chen Feng, a weapons operator launched the missiles in the tail missile pods of the two Goliath-class missile pods and a total of 40 large tactical missiles were fired from the two Goliath-class missile pods. Fly towards the target area mightily at high speed. Already being divided and surrounded, a large number of corpses scattered on the ground suddenly seemed to have sensed something. A large number of zombies and mutated infected people looked at the sky, and Song sought N meteors flying towards them. Some mutated infected people seemed to have sensed some terrible crisis, and there was a roar, and then a flame tactical missile landed. A small mushroom cloud rose and the terrifying black smoke could be clearly seen even 10 kilometers away. The flames produced after the explosion continued to burn the ground, devouring and burning all life. The Jericho 3 split air-to-surface missile is one of Tony's previous research achievements at the Foundation. This large air-to-surface missile was originally installed on strategic bombers. Zero ask for flowers oh. After it is launched to the target area, a large warhead will split into 24 small warheads, each of which is equivalent to a 1,000 pound aerial bomb. I saw that the Jericho type split air to ground missiles split from the air immediately after arriving at the target area, and fell to the ground like a god is scattering flowers, and then a large number of zombies were submerged by the explosion. At this time, after the surprise operation started, countless fighter planes were like vultures assembled in the air, bombarding all infected creatures in the infected area indiscriminately. Under the live broadcast of the battlefield, one can clearly see a mass of huge explosion flames rising continuously on the ground which can be clearly seen even at an altitude of 10,000 meters. Compared with the precise and effective strikes of the Foundation troops commanded by Chen Feng, the Federal Air Force, after obtaining intelligence support, directly carried out carpet bombing with a large number of 852 and B-2 bombers. Each B-52 or B-2 bomber can carry several tons of aerial bombs, drop dozens or even hundreds of aerial bombs into the pile of corpses at one time, and directly blow up the blocks one by one, blasting the flat snow out countless bomb craters. At this time, 
The coalition artillery units on the ground also started shelling. A series of howitzers, self-propelled artillery, and rocket artillery units projected firepower on the infected area like money. The continuous sound of explosions never stopped. Tens of thousands of tons of shells were smashed on the head of a tide of corpses. No matter how powerful the dead households were, they were flooded by shells like raindrops. When the mighty army of ground troops swept across, what greeted them was a surface that was almost bombed out like the surface of the moon. The living zombies are almost hard to see, and some only have countless corpses that have been blown to pieces. Artillery was constantly extended to the infected area, and ground troops advanced along with the barrage. After the first round of fire strikes, a large number of armed helicopters, air gunboat formations, and air-to-ground attack aircraft formations began the second round of air strikes. Mudfak, this place is like hell. When the gunship flight crew passed through the land that had been covered by fire, they barely saw a single inch of intact ground. The earth, which was originally covered in silver, has already been blasted into a pitted and scorched purgatory. The war reporters stared blankly at the firework in front of the camera, and that firework was more exciting than any firework they had seen before. They filmed every inch of the block in the infected area that was almost flattened by the high-intensity firepower density, and showed it to the global audience without reservation. Even Van Vliet didn't fire so hard. Those areas covered by firepower, not to mention zombies, even flies can't survive. Thermobaric bombs seem to be free of money. There are also various high-explosive bombs and aerial bombs weighing more than 1,000 pounds. The density of firepower just now can already raise a large city to the ground. What kind of ruthless person is this commander? Holy shit! This coalition army is too insane. Dogs on the road have to be slapped twice. Passing earthworms will be split vertically by foundation soldiers. Eggs will be shaken to yellow, and instant noodles will be crushed! Exclamation mark. Their zombies passing by have been roasted to adulthood. This Lieutenant Chen Feng will be the master of barbecue. Zombie, I know this well. Lim, there are indeed successors. The barbecue technology is expected to be passed on. Chen's battle is simply warm and affectionate. The temperature in New York State is extremely high today. 5,000 degrees Celsius. It warms people's hearts and warms up zombies. However, Chen Feng glanced at his phone, smiled slightly, and ignored the barrage of sand sculpture netizens. This is just the beginning. Dot. Chapter 99 What about the trap? The absolute dominance of the Gloria class. After launching the Heaven's Punishment operation, only one hour passed, and the ground troops had advanced a distance of 10 kilometers. In particular, Krieger's vanguard advanced 20 kilometers all the way. The battle progressed rapidly. But Chen Feng did not have much joy, because all the coalition troops encountered and destroyed in the early stage were ordinary zombies and low-level mutant infected people. No matter how many of these things there are, they are nothing more than cannon fodder. Under the powerful firepower, these guys are harvested by the fast advancing coalition forces like mowing grass. It was wiped out under the frenzied firepower of the air force and artillery. Relying on Goliath's tracking system, all movements on the ground are controlled by Xfing, and they are immediately summarized and sent to the surrounding troops. Once a corpse wave with a slightly larger scale is detected, it will suffer a devastating blow. Those fighter planes hovering in the airspace of the combat zone will immediately go to strike, destroying the ground targets sent to them by Xfing. However, with the rapid September 17th advance of the troops, as they got closer to the infected city and the biochemical lair, those high-level mutants began to increase, and a parasite army appeared. The speed of advancement is not so fast, although the coalition forces still have absolute air dominance by this time. However, the Bundys began to experience attrition. Xfing, who took over the CIC, immediately reported this emergency. Commander. The Federal Air Force close to the three broods has suffered losses, and some fighters have been parasitized, and about 26 fighters have been lost. Chen Feng immediately said after hearing it. Transmit the video to the big screen. On the big screen, the images of several high-level mutants appeared. It's the corrupt one-eyed titans. These guys are a serious threat to air and armor. In the picture is a mutated humanoid creature with a height of about 7-8 meters, with only one blood-colored one-eyed, and a sarcoid-like cannon-like firing organ will be alienated on their back. This alienated organ will launch an attack similar to a particle weapon. Once the armor and fighter are hit, they will be infected and corroded. If the driver and crew do not evacuate immediately, they will become one of them after being corroded by infection. However, after all the crew members were vaccinated, those flight members parachuted immediately and were not parasitized. But even so, the parasitized fighters would immediately grow alienated flesh to control them. Seeing this, Chen Feng said calmly, Sure enough, the masterminds of those biochemical aliens are waiting for me here. Unsurprisingly, the real purpose of those human traitors is to parasitize these two Goliath ships, right? Natasha Romanoff on the side said, Commander, maybe this is a trap? Chen Feng echoed her sentiments, It must be a trap. Otherwise why hasn't our area been attacked? So what if it's just a trap? These prey still think they are hunters. Isn't setting traps when they are not strong enough to kill themselves? Natasha Romanoff, 
who already knew the performance of the Goliath class, burst into laughter when she heard Chen Feng's analogy. Maybe it's because after being parasitized, the brain has degenerated. At this time, an iron man wearing a red and yellow steel battle suit walked in. It was Tony who disappeared during this time. Tony snapped his fingers. Looks like I missed a lot, buddy. Do you think it's time for us to strike? It seems that you can't wait to teach that trait to obey Dyer a lesson. Definitely. I don't want the legacy of Stark Industries to be tainted by a bunch of twisted monsters and zombies. It's not yet time. Just wait. There is still a good show to be staged. The reporters who saw Tony's appearance let out a burst of exclamation. Tony also knew that Chen Feng was directing at this time, so he went to the media to make an appearance. Chen Feng was not afraid of Obadiah's trap, and ordered the fleet to move forward. In the lair of at the moment, Obadiah observed the Goliath-class space carrier in a sky that was almost within range of the parasitic brood city. Grinning on his face that had already been eroded by alienation, he who was integrated with the armor looked abnormally ferocious and looked at the two Gloria-class motherships in the sky. Stupid Tony, Stark, and damn Foundation Commander Chen Feng, you are so arrogant. How dare you underestimate the power of D-08. Blessed by the power of my loving father, I am no longer what I used to be, and the strength of the brood city is far beyond what you can imagine. This will be hell for you, get ready to become one of us, GGG. Obeyed I laughed distortedly looking at the Goliath-class helicopter carrier that has fully entered the range, as if he has seen the ugliness of all his enemies being infected by parasites. Obadiah snapped his fingers, using the ability infected by the parasite, through its mecha. He gave an order to attack the nearby high-level mutants and the parasite army that had been ambushing. In an instant, dozens of huge amounts of light beams, as well as Patriot surface-to-air missiles infected with flesh and blood all launched towards the Gloria-class space carrier where Chen Feng was. Xfeng's voice sounded. Heat source signal detected, it is a surface-to-air missile, and a high-energy particle weapon. The deflection shield is deployed, and the guard interceptor system is activated. I saw that when hundreds of flesh Patriot missiles approached the Goliath-class space carrier, they were intercepted by the guard interceptor systems on the bottom and sides of the ship. The 50mm multi-barrel phalanx with intelligent fire control can destroy the missile when it is close to the distance of 2 km with great precision. And when those high-energy particle beams hit the hull, a light blue energy shield was seen covering the outer layer of the hull. Dozens of high-energy beams hit the shield, causing a trace of ripples, and then dissipated without a trace. No trace. This, how is this possible? Damn living people. Give me a full attack. Seeing the failure of the attack, Obadiah was so angry that his remaining brain was about to be corroded, so he ordered all the corrupted one-eyed titans and surface-to-air missiles to continue to attack. At the same time, a large number of parasitic fighter planes swarmed out of the nest city and rushed towards the Gloria class. Seeing this scene, Natasha Romanoff glanced at Chen Feng admiringly. Sure enough, the experienced commander was already in the atmosphere. It really is a trap. The missile pod launches missiles, and the interception system is handed over to Xfeng for automatic fire. Carrier-based aircraft formation. Intercept the enemy's air force units. Positron guns are ready. Target the group where the enemy's one-eyed titan is located. Commander. The charge of the Positron Cannon has reached the critical value, and the target is a one-eyed Titan cluster. The muscle hatch is open, the safety has been released, and it can be fired. Positronic Siege Cannon, fire. I saw that the two Goliath-class air suppression motherships in the air had been aimed at the ground, and the gun ports on the front central armor of the two Goliath-class motherships had been opened. The huge muzzles of the two 600mm black holes aimed at the one-eyed Titan clusters in the nest city block, with two huge beams of red and blue alternately shining on the ground in an instant. The scorching and terrifying temperature instantly melted all the reinforced concrete and chitinous flesh armor, as well as the alienated flesh and blood into coke. Everything was destroyed under the violent shockwave, and those seven or eight meter tall corrupt one-eyed Titans were immediately reduced to ashes under such a terrifying attack. Under the terrifying destructive force, only two huge deep pits of hundreds of square meters in Fanyuan remained, and the streets and monsters that existed on the deep pits were all gone. Even Obadiah, who had been parasitized and integrated with the armor, couldn't help feeling deeply terrified. Under such extreme fear, countless flesh and blood armored robots swarmed out like a swarm of stimulated bees. All 2.2 enemies have already been mobilized, but the strength of the foundation is only the tip of the iceberg. At this time, all the weapon systems of the Goliath class have been unlocked. Why is it called a ground attack ship? In addition to the massive missiles, the powerful artillery installed on the two space carriers started shelling the ground. Each Gloria is equipped with four hail type 8 tube 100mm rapid fire guns. The two Goliath ships are eight hail class multiple barreled rapid fire guns. This terrifying weapon is equivalent to the artillery type Gatlin. After unlocking, the dense and hail like terrifying firepower, comparable to 10 artillery regiments, is pouring crazily on the ground in the air at 5 km that insane firepower. After only pouring for one minute, under the influence of Xfeng's intelligent fire control, 
At least a parasite army of 10,000 people and hundreds of one-eyed titans were directly blown to pieces. And this is just a short minute of the Goliath class's powerful firepower like the death god in the sky. The barrel re-entered cooling. This was nothing more than a doomed battle. Dot. Chapter 100 Prelude to the Decisive Battle, Killing the Original Ally the, After the Goliath class Helicarrier launched a powerful ground attack ability. The entire battlefield fell into a brief silence. The two Gloria class ships are like two super rare gunships fixed in the sky, constantly pouring firepower on the ground. Under the suppression of powerful firepower, the coalition troops can be described as advancing steadily. According to Chen Feng's original combat plan, the purpose of Operation Heaven's Punishment is to compress the range of activities of those biochemically infected creatures into the three biochemical hive cities. After that, Chen Feng asked the coalition forces to launch a general attack, and then assisted Allies to absorb the cause of the three broods. According to the prompts of the system, and the analysis of the samples extracted by Dr. Wilhelm later, there is no doubt that the black light virus infected by Ally has integrated the existence of the 008 parent strain. And the reason why the abnormal containment object 008 will split into so many biochemical viruses is that the abnormal containment object 008 desires to evolve. Evolutionary mutation is the instinct of contained object 008, and infinite evolution and mutation will choose countless paths. Although the mother strain of containment 008 resides in the black light virus, it is because the black light virus has infinite possibilities, and its host will continue to evolve until it becomes a perfect life form. However, the mother plant and daughter plant split from the abnormal containment object 008 have a competitive relationship. This is a winner-takes-all game. The winner will become the strongest biochemical evolution, and the loser will lose everything. What is integrated with Obadiah is a T-virus alienation form of a relatively powerful containment substrain. This is also why Obadiah can control so many corpses and army of mutated creatures. I'm afraid he has already controlled three biochemical broods. However, this is almost the limit of Obadiah in 2009. If it takes time. Obadiah may be able to pass through the three biochemical broods and the Stark industry controlled by Obadiah among the three biochemical broods. The factories constantly manufacture all kinds of flesh and blood machinery. At that time, it may become very difficult to deal with him. But after encountering Chen Feng's offensive, the biochemical army controlled by Obadiah retreated steadily. So Obadiah, who couldn't hold back, finally chose to fight back in advance. This led to the reason why this battle turned into a decisive battle ahead of schedule. Chen Feng didn't immediately turn this battle into a decisive battle, naturally because he wanted to let Ali Uther evolve into a stronger one before participating in the battle. Ali Uther also needs to constantly evolve in order to grow to the point where she can participate in the mission, right after the conversation before orbiting down. Ali Uther came to a secret base controlled by the Foundation. On the other side of the battlefield, a battle of life and death is also going on here. This is an arena-like facility in a Foundation research base, and at this time Ali Uther was standing alone in the center of this arena-like hall. The figure of Ali Uther at the moment with red and white hair is more and more perfect than before. This mature intellectual beauty is rushing towards a T-103 tyrant at an extremely fast speed. Like a red phantom, she easily avoided the attack of the T-103 tyrant and then turned her hands into sharp blades to cut off the tyrant's claws. After consecutive slashes with the precision of a scalpel, the tyrant fell to the ground with serious injuries, and then Eliza's right hand grasped the heart of the T-103 tyrant, absorbing and devouring it. The next moment, Eliza's hands unlocked the shape of a tyrant's sharp claws, and her body shape also increased slightly. Her legs became more slender and her figure became more mature and charming. This is Eliza's mission, to constantly devour those high-level infected people and let Ali Uther gradually adapt to the constantly evolution of the black light virus. Only after Ali Uther possesses the black light virus has evolved to a certain strength, it becomes possible for Ali Uther to devour the core of the biochemical brood. Otherwise, Ali Uther might very well become like Obadiah, who on the surface is dominated by his own consciousness, but has actually been reduced to a puppet of the contained object 008. Chen Feng didn't want to go all out to help Ali Uther devour and evolve, but her consciousness was replaced by the containment object 008 and everything would be over in that case. The researchers who had been observing Ali Uther's body data from above quickly recorded her body strength data. The cell activity has increased by 6.8%, the comprehensive strength has increased by 8.1%, and the reaction speed has increased by 5.7%. The alienated T-103 tyrant's claws are unlocked, and can be easily converted into humans. My god, what kind of monster is this? All 10 T-103 tyrants were killed by her alone and she is still constantly evolving. Looking at Ali Uther in the middle of the arena, Dr. Wilhelm frowned. It's still too slow. The battle on the commander's side has already begun, and her evolution speed is still not enough. Details. Dr. Wilhelm picked up the microphone indifferently, and asked indifferently, Experimental prototype, can you continue to conduct experimental tests? Hearing Dr. Wilhelm's title, 
Eliza didn't care at all, her scarlet eyes coldly glanced at the observation window of the research institute. Eliza doesn't care about Dr. Wilhelm who has almost no human feelings and puts everything into research. What she cares about now is that she must complete the task assigned by the commander, because it is related to the life and death of countless people, when she herself is carrying the black light virus that integrated the mother strain of the containment 008. Eliza slightly recalled her previous memories. She didn't really die, but the black light virus symbiotically coexisted with her, and integrated and repaired her organs that had been smashed into rotten flesh by bullets. But that also caused Eliza to temporarily lose her memory. Thinking of those friends who fought side by side with me, the foundation that helped me recover my memory, and the entrustment of Commander His Excellency Chen Feng. Eliza knew that this was a responsibility she had evaded so much, she had to face those mutated evolutions. If she didn't devour those monsters and win with her will, then she would eventually be replaced by the consciousness of the birth of containment object 008. In order to survive, Eliza had no choice. So regardless of her exhaustion, Eliza said to Wilhelm on the observation deck, continue. The next project is to fight against 1,000 hunters. After speaking, the isolation door of the platform was opened, and 1,000 hunters howled and were released from the cage, and rushed towards Eliza, whom they thought was almost the most delicious food. Eliza's eyes instantly became as dangerous as the predator at the top of the food chain. Her hands turned into sharp claws, and with one claw, the first hunter who rushed forward was turned into a pulp, and then devoured. Wilhelm continued to look indifferently at Eliza who was fighting like a tiger among a herd of sheep. After about twenty minutes of bloody battle, Eliza, who was out of breath and bathed in blood, stood in the center of the battlefield with a strange beauty. However, Dr. Wilhelm did not give her time to rest at all, but gave her orders indifferently. Start the next wave, increase the difficulty, three biochemical titans, ten alienated tyrants, one hundred wailing banshees, one thousand hunters, and ten thousand zombies. With the opening of the isolation door, there were deafening roars one after another, and countless mutated creatures poured out from the passage. Feeling the threat of the grass, Eliza rushed towards the biochemical titan like a mountain like a bolt of lightning. The ground in the air jumped and flipped onto its back. The right hand turned into huge amounts of sharp blades and pierced its heart fiercely. The next moment, Eliza seemed to have reached a critical point, and bloody wings formed of flesh and blood grew from her back, accompanied by a roar like a sound wave. Countless flesh and blood thorns covered the scene and all the monsters were instantly absorbed by them as nutrients. Seeing this, Wilhelm nodded in satisfaction, it's time. Returning to the brood battlefield, Chen Feng at the moment didn't know that Eliza had already completed the devouring evolution ahead of schedule with the assistance of Dr. Wilhelm. Her consciousness and physical condition have grown to the point where she can attempt to devour the hive core. At the moment Chen Feng was still having a headache, should he take the risk of destroying the surface of the three mother nests with firepower? The Foundation has already scanned the structure of the Mother Nest. The Mother Nest is a terrifying nest made of flesh and blood, almost hundreds of meters deep underground, and it is difficult to completely destroy it even with the use of nuclear weapons. Even if the part 250 of the surface is blown up, it still needs to go deep into the core area of the Mother Nest at the bottom to destroy the Mother Nest. To be honest, Chen Feng didn't expect Obadiah to be so restless. The Heaven's Punishment operation had already approached the city in less than half a day destroying at least one-third of the corpse tide. At this time, Obadiah couldn't sit still anymore, and Guiran jumped out to ambush Chen Feng's Biofilyru class space carrier. Although the ambush failed, it still made Chen Feng a little annoyed. This is like the feeling that the enemy not only refused to surrender, but also dared to attack our army. At the moment, the two Gloria class space carriers were hovering over the outskirts of the brood city, constantly pouring firepower at the tide of corpses pouring out of the brood city. But those zombies seemed to be inexhaustible and they continued to charge wave after wave. However, the Goliath class just didn't enter the sky above the brood city. The two Goliaths could indeed temporarily suppress the brood, but the brood would constantly produce violent soldiers. Once the underground brood cannot be destroyed, it is difficult to solve the problem immediately with just two Goliath ships. Chen Feng now had to be patient, letting the two Gloria class aerospace carriers stay outside the city to constantly consume the brood, and focus all firepower on destroying Obadiah's flesh and blood meshes. With Goliath's firepower advantage, the production ability of the brood is far from being able to offset the firepower of the Goliath helicopter. My firepower is endless, but your zombies are limited. Chen Feng, who has taken the initiative on the battlefield, now has only one problem, how to abuse the spring water to gain more. Just when Chen Feng was struggling, Tony Stark who was beside him couldn't hold back anymore. Even though it was dark outside, Tony was eager to fight. Tony always believed that Obadiah was responsible for causing such a disaster. So Tony who was eager to fight, couldn't help but suggested to Chen Feng, Ah, brother Chen Feng, can I fight? You know, that idiot is my responsibility. Chen Feng patted him on the shoulder and agreed, Go ahead, I will continue to command from the battleship, if you can't hold on, 
Don't resist, we will support you. If you like this audiobook, subscribe the channel for more videos like this and join my Patreon if you want to support me. Leave some comment and let me know if you guys like this story, or you have a web novel you like and want to hear its audiobook. I will be happy to create them for you. Please like, share, and leave a comment on the video.